you. Thank you. On behalf of Professor Abhay Karandika, Director IT Kanpur, and the entire institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this morning, would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you at the 40th reunion of the class of 1982. This is a very momentous occasion, as I'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 63 glorious years of Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor Kantej Balani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Mr. Amud Agarwal, Batch Coordinator, to kindly take his seat on the dais. I now humbly request Professor Ashutosh Sharma, Batch Representative, to kindly join us on the dais. And I would now request Professor Abhay Karandika, Director IT Kanpur, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Kalyanam Arogyam Dana Sampada Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyotir Namostute At the commencement of any auspicious occasion, Jyoti has been observed. The lighting of lamp symbolizes abundance, prosperity, and knowledge, dispelling dark darkness and ignorance. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I would now request Mr. Amod Agrawal to kindly come forward to pay tribute to their batchmates and address the gathering. Professor Krandika, Director IIT Kanpur, Professor Kantes Blani, Dora, my dear friend Ashutosh Sharma, <coughs> all the delegates here, and all the uh, uh, people who have made this event possible, Shweta, <clears throat> Sakshi and all of the team members. On behalf of our entire fraternity of 1982 batch, I welcome you all to this session. 45 years ago, all of us had come to this institute, fresh minds just out of schools. Many of us just came out of our home. Five years we spent here together, which made us what we are today. After this completion of five years, we had these 270, 275 lifelong friends. And we move, uh, from here, we moved on to our uh, different parts of the world to lead our further life, to find uh, further education, for further our careers, and etc. Our further life in this world. Some of our friends finished their this journey of life in this motor world much early and left for their heavenly abode to join their elderly. Today, as we start our this program, on behalf of all of you, 
I would like to pay tribute to them. We will observe two minutes of silence in memory of them, to remember them, to uh, uh, pay homage to them. So I request all of you, please join me. Shut up for us to do silence. Om Shanti. I would just like to uh, uh, name uh, as far as the information I have, all those who have left this word. Sanjay Arte, uh, Sanjay Patil, Rajesh Bhatia, whom we properly knew, and uh, in fact the entire institute knew him as the, by the name Audio, R.B. Tipati, O.O. Linus, Harishankar Rajan, Ravi Shankar Nat, uh, Natrajan, Manoj Pante, Vimal Shah, Anil Gupta, and Sunil Narayan. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing old memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of IIT Kanpur. Despite the number of years that have passed, I'm sure you all remained young at heart. We saw yesterday also. <laughs> so why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming rowdy students once again? So let's make this 24th, 40th reunion memorable, shall we? I request everyone to clap with me three times and shout 40 as loud as you can. That still doesn't work. <laughs> I'm Shweta. This badge went to Delhi to watch Asia, right? A multicultural sports event. Does it, don't you think it asks for more Josh? Come on this time with IT's tempo. Okay. Better, thank you. So let me take you through a short trip down the memory lane. 44 years ago, two 70 young boys and five girls from across India decided to embark on this challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city called Kanpur, now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. Tuition fees kuch 200 rupay ki thi, hostel rent 100 rupay ka, aur monthly ka mess bill 130 rupay ka.
अभी तो हम कैंपस आए ही थे पैसे कहाँ खर्च हो गए बजट कैसे बढ़ गया शायद अठन्नी की चाय बारह आने का समोसा कैप्सटन है कि और गोल्डन ईगल साथ का जो ऐड हो गया इट वॉज एन एरा ऑफ शमी कपूर एंड शर्मिला टैगोर मनोरंजन वॉज अ ब्लॉक बस्टर एंड कश्मीर की कली सॉन्ग्स आज फॉर मैक्सिम नंबर ऑफ रिपीट्स नो विच वन वॉज दैट शोले एम टी की चाय वॉज ऑलवेज स्पेशल एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू कुड बी फाउंड ऑर्डरिंग हॉल टू का हक्का चाओ हॉल थ्री की एक्सप्रेसो कैफे हॉल पाँच का एग पराठा और कल्याणपुर की दही जलेबी फेमस जागन्स ऑफ द अड्डा पॉइंट वर फत्रू फुड्डा सीड फंडा गोल है तेल हो गया द ब्रॉल बिटवीन हॉल टू एंड हॉल थ्री हैड बीन फेमस फॉर वेरियस रीजन्स Battle of supremacy would range right from competing during the cultural fest or sports to stealing of fuses or mass shouting from the rooftop during blackouts to aligning with girls hostel for various reasons it reminds me of the famous quote by atal bihari bajpayee ji kaurav kon kon pandav tedha sawal hai dono aur shakuni ka phaila koot jaal hai This was a batch which still remembers. In fact, this is a batch which still remembers a graduating wisdom statement by our ex-director Professor Sampath. During the their convocation, it was asked by one of the student, "Sir, what we did did we learn here in four years?" To which he replied, "My dear, if you learned that every problem has a solution, then we did a good job, and it was well received." and still fresh in the memory of you alumni okay sir i'll correct it ladies and gentlemen this was a compassionate patch to build bridge at tikri village under ncc camp which impacted villages of tikri a studious batch to still remember lecture on heat transfer from professor j shrinivas and derivatives as well as derivatives of professor bhatia and to top it all the author of books like thomas evan krezik and robert resnick and david halliday an adventurous batch where few batchmates dare to go for a trekking trip to sintan pass in jammu and kashmir that too totally unprepared lucky them they came back safe and last but not least a blessed batch because 270 ladkon mein ek hi ladka kabil nikla as one girl chose her life partner here <laughs> i can't personally share all your recollections of it kanpur but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look of the class of 1982 whose members have such nicknames i request those who are present here to kindly raise their hand to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand audio pondi tolia sandy bong mungi magga gandhi just to name a few this is all i have from the treasure of the memories of class of 1982 this is all i have from the treasure of memories of class of 1982 i hope i got my facts right On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about in our next reunion. We are so pleased to gather here today in person. Something we cannot take for granted anymore. Now, ladies and gentlemen, without taking any more of your precious time, I would invite Professor Abhay Karandika, Director, IIT Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. Uh, 
good morning and uh, on behalf of uh, iit kanpur and uh, on my own personal behalf uh, i would like to welcome you all uh, to the campus uh, we have been having uh, uh, physical reunions uh, after almost a gap of uh, uh, more than 2 years and this year uh, we have planned about 14 reunions uh, of different batches uh, <clears throat> already about uh, i think 8 uh, 6 six, six this is the seventh reunion so we are halfway mark and uh, some more are planned uh, uh, in uh, this month and february and will finally end up in march uh, i think uh, <clears throat> so i will just give you a, a brief update on uh, some of the progress that institute has made uh, i gave this uh, presentation recently during our us visit also and i know that i met some of you so uh, this may be a partially repeat lecture uh, for uh, some of you but uh, some more informations Uh, so first of all i think uh, this shows the newly renovated fountain in front of uh, uh, the central library pk kelkar library uh, this is called uh, waterfront 795 uh, we got a very generous donation from the batch of 79 and 95 so i think it is uh, therefore named after that uh, as the 795 Uh, i strongly encourage you to take a look at this uh, especially during the nights when it is uh, lit uh, so it is uh, you know uh, in front of the pk kelkar library <coughs> <coughs> so this is how we are we are in 1963 uh, we had um, our ibm 1620 computers uh, in fact id kanpur was one of the first uh, to get uh, you know the mini frame computers at that time uh, since then uh, we have now come uh, uh, to uh, a very state of the art data center that we have uh, with a 1.3 petaflop uh, high performance compute cluster uh, again uh, Uh, you i would encourage you to uh, go to the computer center and take a look uh, at a very modern data center that we have recently built uh, maybe in the next last two years uh, uh, or so uh, we have a very lush green campus the student strength is now uh, more than 9000 uh, we have very rapidly grown and uh, now uh, 50% are mtech and phd students almost 50% Uh, and uh, we have now a faculty strength of uh, 551 uh, despite you know large buildings uh, that have come up uh, uh, we have only grown in terms of green cover uh, in fact uh, the number of trees has only grown i have an exact number since the number of trees uh, which were there in 1980s and and, and now Uh, we have now 19 academic departments a uh, lot of new departments uh, that were added uh, recently and uh, many after you have graduated uh, department of biological sciences and bioengineering was established uh, in the year 2000 uh, we have uh, recently added four new departments department of uh, sustainable energy engineering uh, department of design Uh, department of cognitive science department of space science and astronomy uh, we are perhaps the only iit which has the department of cognitive sciences uh, and uh, uh, more recently i think uh, the department of uh, sustainable energy engineering uh, we are only offering right now in these uh, four uh, departments uh, mtech and phd programs uh, but uh, certainly i think we will start an undergraduate program at least in sustainable uh, energy engineering in the years to come uh, we have uh, 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 an online masters degree program it is a completely online program you don't have to come to iid kanpur and uh, uh, physically to undertake this program and this is for upskilling industry uh, professionals uh, uh, which have a two years experience uh, that's what they can do 
uh, we have a very popular program. So these are some of the examples. For example, e-masters in cybersecurity. This is a very high uptake. E-masters in uh, wireless uh, communication systems. E-masters in data science and business analytics, uh, and so on. So these are uh, very, very popular e-masters programs. Some new e-masters programs are in the offings, like. Uh, uh, you know, by energy, uh, they are thinking of offering e-masters program in electric mobility and, uh, you know, uh, electric vehicles and so on. Uh, recently, we have taken a significant uh, undergraduate academic reforms. Institute already has the most flexible uh, academic programs among all IITs. Uh, for example, uh, two distinctive features of the academic program has been double major and dual degree. Uh, so a student uh, can spend an extra year and get a major in another discipline. For example, you are a B.Tech in electrical engineering, you can get another major in computer science uh, by spending an extra year. And uh, you can also do a dual degree. Uh, so you can do a B.Tech in electrical engineering and M.Tech in computer science, uh, or you can do B.Tech in electrical engineering, you can do M.S. in economic sciences. We have a department of economic sciences which offer a BSMS program in economic sciences where the admissions are done through JE. Uh, two years back, we also started a BSMS program in statistics and data sciences. So you could do, for example, BTEC in electrical engineering and MS in economic sciences. So these are dual degree programs and this is very unique in IIT Kanpur because I know since uh, I have been a faculty at IIT Bombay for uh, more than two decades, uh, you can do dual degree only in the same department there, but uh, in IIT Kanpur, you can do dual degree uh, in other departments. Uh, we have recently revamped uh, the curriculum with a uh, lot of flexibility. Uh, IIT Kanpur uh, Senate recently approved uh, student entrepreneurship policy where uh, students can actually now have their startups and incubation activities. And actually, we can give an academic credits also for approved entrepreneurial activities. We have introduced a notion of innovations and entrepreneurial credits uh, and so on. <clears throat> we are having also a new degree options. Uh, for example, we have introduced a notion of honors degree, uh, interdepartmental degrees, uh, and BTM degrees, Bachelor of Technology with Management. Uh, so these are some new degrees. And uh, these were recently as a part of the uh, undergraduate academic reforms, UGARC, which was approved uh, one and a half years back. And uh, many of these uh, features are now under implementations. Uh, we have also uh, introduced, uh, uh, you know, our grading system to be now more granular. So earlier when you graduated, you had A, B, C, D, E with uh, 10, uh, 8, and 6, and 4. Now, you know, we have introduced more granularity, so you can go from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on. And uh, with this grading, for the first time, uh, only the last semester, this uh, grading was, uh, uh, was done. <clears throat> we have undertaken a significant faculty growth uh, recently. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, during, I mean, I took over as a director in April 2018, and in the last, uh, uh, four and a half years, some 200 new faculty members have joined. When I took over, the faculty strength was 397. Uh, now it is 551. There have been some retirements and some resignations, so effective increase has been uh, 150, but uh, out of the 200 are new faculty members. So, in fact, 30% of the faculty members of the institute today are the faculty members who joined during my, my tenure here uh, uh, in the last uh, five years. Uh, we are, however, still uh, one of the uh, smallest among old IITs. Uh, you know, IIT, uh, Madras, Delhi, and Bombay, they have a faculty strength of more than, I mean, close to 650 or so. So I think uh, that is where, uh, you know, we are. Uh, we have a very distinguished faculty. We have, uh, uh, you know, Padmashri awardees. Uh, in fact, uh, Professor Vinod Singh and Professor Manindra Gravala are still on faculty role. Uh, we have winners of Infosys Science, uh, Professor Ashutosh Sharma, uh, who is your batchmate, is himself a very distinguished uh, colleague uh, and, uh, uh, you know, very well known. Uh, uh, he has been also awarded with uh, many awards and honors. Uh, amongst uh, our uh, faculty, we have also have a 
a foreign associate of uh, US National Academy of Science. Uh, being members of US National Academy of Science is considered a very prestigious honor in the US. Uh, and it is a matter of great pride for us that one of our faculty members uh, uh, happens to be a foreign member of the uh, US National uh, Academy of Sciences. And then, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, several contributions and awards like Gordel Prize, Tuas Prize, Humboldt Research Awards, uh, Shanti Sarup Bhatnagar Prize. Uh, uh, so uh, among all IITs, uh, we have the highest number of Bhatnagar awardees on roll. Of course, if you leave aside IISC Bangalore and TIFR, then among IITs, uh, we have the maximum number of uh, uh, Bhatnagar awardees uh, currently as on the roll. <coughs> We have a very vibrant uh, research and innovation uh, ecosystem. Uh, apart from the academic departments, uh, we have uh, a few research centers on thematic areas, uh, and I will uh, sort of uh, talk about them. Uh, we have a very vibrant uh, incubator. Uh, I'll give you a brief background uh, on our incubator. Uh, we are setting up a techno park uh, where we would like to invite uh, uh, the industry to set up uh, their R&D labs and design centers. In fact, uh, uh, Technopark CEO Rima Mittal is here. She is, uh, will talk about uh, that. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, in the last uh, three decades, set up uh, very state-of-the-art uh, uh, central research uh, facilities. Uh, so just to give you a brief background of our incubation, uh, we have consolidated all our incubation activities under a not-for-profit uh, Section 8 company. Uh, we have currently 150 plus startups uh, in our portfolio. Uh, and uh, in the last two years, uh, we received close to 375 crores of funding from seed investors and uh, angel investors and VCs in these startups. Uh, some of the startups I would just uh, like to mention here, we have a startup, Endure Air, uh, which is uh, being set up by one of our faculty member, uh, Professor Abhishek from Aerospace. Uh, <clears throat> they have developed a technology. They had a recent uh, uh, exhi uh, exhibits in Defense Expo and Air Show, and uh, 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 they are, uh, uh, you know, supplying uh, uh, their drones and unmanned aerial vehicles uh, to our defense forces, both uh, in uh, the Army and the, uh, and the Air Force. Uh, we have a, uh, a company which was set up by our uh, students of grid technology, which is developing a very novel uh, and cost-efficient battery technology. Uh, and uh, they have developed a technology which is going uh, undergoing global trials. And in fact, uh, Shell uh, technology has uh, made a significant investment uh, in the startup. So uh, this shows that uh, uh, there is a significant uh, global interest in the technology. Uh, another company which is in the area of sustainable technology is Fool, uh, which is converting the temple flowers into biodegradable products. So they have many products, uh, but uh, uh, recently I think they have developed um, a, a vegan leather, uh, which is uh, also has undergone uh, some feed trials, and I think uh, this will be a really disruption uh, where you can have um, animal-free uh, leather, uh, and, uh, you, and, and once uh, that is done, then of course uh, you can develop many leather products uh, uh, out of this. Our incubator has received uh, several accolades and achievements. Uh, during COVID-19, uh, uh, one of our incubating company, Nokark, uh, developed uh, the invasive uh, uh, portable ventilator, which has now been deployed uh, in more than 4,000 hospitals across the country. We had set up uh, a IIT Kanpur consortium of experienced medical uh, and industry professionals, alumni, and this uh, incubating company. Uh, now they have set up a uh, big manufacturing plant in Pune, uh, and uh, I think this company is doing extremely uh, well. Uh, both Shrikan Shastri and our pro uh, faculty professor Amitabha Bandopadhyay has uh, chronicled uh, their journey uh, in this book, The Ventilator Project. And in fact, uh, this book also became uh, one of the uh, best sellers. Uh, <clears throat> I will just briefly tell you about some of the national centers uh, that we have set up. We have a, a Center for Cyber Security, uh, which has India's first uh, test bed for cyber security of critical infrastructure. Uh, we are closely working with National Security Council Secretariat. Uh, in fact, uh, our cybersecurity center is uh, providing security to 
data centers of national highway authority uh, 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 port trusts uh, national stock exchange uh, bombay stock exchange securities and exchange board of india uh, and so on so this is again a very very state of the art uh, uh, facility uh, we have one of its kind uh, center for flexible electronics uh, which is doing r and d uh, in organic semiconductors and uh, flexible electronics uh, we have very state of the art machine which can print uh, electronics on any flexible substrate like paper or plastic and so on uh, and uh, they have developed uh, you know uh, many technologies and products uh, again uh, if you have time i would strongly encourage you to uh, take a look at the facility uh, this uh, uh, printing machine the which can print electronic circuits uh, is again one of its kind, uh, the only one in the country, uh, and uh, uh, I would really strongly encourage uh, to have a visit at this. Uh, uh, Center for Nano Sciences, in fact, uh, uh, Professor Ashutosh Sharma is uh, involved with this. Uh, this is again a very state of the art uh, facility. Uh, one of the um, uh, technology uh, which was developed was caught. Uh, um, incubated in our incubator is eSpin Nanotech, uh, uh, which we are developing these uh, nanofibers earlier that was used uh, for water filters, and then they had repurposed it for developing the um, N95 masks uh, during COVID. And in fact, uh, eSpin had set up their manufacturing plant in the campus itself, and they were manufacturing close to 25,000 E95 masks every day. So that also. Uh, was uh, a big success uh, uh, during COVID. Uh, with the support from Rahul Mehta uh, and Mehta Family Foundation, uh, we have recently set up Mehta Family Center for Engineering in Medicine, uh, which is focusing on regenerative medicine, molecular medicine, and digital medicine. Uh, this is again a part of the Biosciences and Bioengineering Department. Uh, IIT Kanpur uh, is a part of a Pan IIT consortium for developing the 5G testbed. In fact, I have been sort of intimately involved uh, with the 5G standardizations and 5G technology development. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, even though it is a Pan IIT efforts, but the 5G base station of that testbed was developed here. Uh, we are in the process of uh, now licensing the technology uh, to the Tata Group. Uh, which, as you know, the Tata Group has taken over the uh, Tejas Networks and Sankhya Labs, uh, and uh, uh, they are actually uh, 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 working on licensing this technology. Uh, recently, uh, Prime Minister acknowledged these efforts uh, in his Man Ki Baat, uh, where he said that IIT Madras or IIT Kanpur ne Bharat ke Swadeshi 5G testbed ko tayar karne mein agrani bhumika nibhai hai. So I think uh, that was, uh, uh, you know, that gives significant visibility to our work. <coughs> we are setting up a uh, very state of the art center for excellence for unmanned aerial vehicles with the support from Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Uh, in fact, we are going to start a new MTech program in drones. Uh, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, you know, uh, very soon. Uh, UP government has also given a funding of about 15 crores uh, for uh, uh, this center. <coughs> uh, recently, we uh, undertook a very major exercise, uh, as uh, some of you may know, uh, that uh, uh, there is a public grievance redressal portal, um, the CP grams, where any public can upload uh, uh, grievances. Uh, uh, so, uh, lakhs of grievances are uploaded on the portal and so far the system was to actually um, uh, manually uh, look at uh, those uh, grievances and uh, they had a very primitive classification engine. Uh, so, we have done uh, uh, first of its uh, kind automation to put a backend AI engine uh, which is now being used to classify the grievances based on machine learning uh, algorithms. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, we had earlier done it uh, for the Ministry of Defense portal and when the uh, Honorable Defense Minister gave a presentation to the Prime Minister, then he desired that uh, this should be extended uh, to the PMO grievance portal and the CP gram also, which we have now uh, recently done. Uh, uh, IIT Kanpur also got the national award for e-governance uh, for this project. So this has been a, a major national e-governance uh, project uh, where we have put uh, 
the AI engine uh, in the back end of this uh, CPGram portals. Uh, uh, I think our efforts have been recognized uh, uh, by uh, the government uh, and the Honorable Prime Minister also had tweeted last year uh, that proud to see IIT Kanpur become a hub for futuristic research and innovations in uh, blockchain technologies, monitoring air quality, electronic fuel injections, uh, and more. Uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, we have set up uh, uh, several academic and R&D infrastructure with support uh, from uh, all uh, uh, alumni and even non-alumni also. And uh, we are indeed uh, grateful to uh, all of you. With uh, Mehta Family Center of Engineering and Medicine, we have set up uh, uh, this center, which I already talked about. Uh, with the support uh, from uh, Dr. Ranjit Singh, we have set up uh, uh, Dr. Ranjit Singh, Roji Shiksha Kendra, uh, which is being led again by your batch uh, mates, uh, uh, Professor Sandeep Sangal and uh, Rita Singh, and uh, they are doing amazing work uh, for the rural youth uh, empowerment uh, and skilling. Uh, and I think I'm sure uh, they can take you around to, of this center. Uh, we are also uh, again grateful to Dr. Ranjit Singh, who very generously donated 1.9 million uh, US dollars uh, for this center. Uh, Jeet Bindra uh, had uh, set up a Jeet Bindra Unit Operations and Innovations Lab in the Chemical Engineering Department. Uh, Sudhakar Keshwan uh, uh, also gave a very generous donation of 2.5 million uh, US dollars for setting up the Chandrakanta Keshwan Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solutions. Uh, and in fact, as a part of this center, we are undertaking the exercise of making IIT Kanpur carbon neutral uh, in the next five years or so. <coughs> uh, with uh, again donations from um, Muktesh Pant, uh, uh, who happened to be, uh, he's a 76 batch alumnus, who happened to be the uh, son of a famous Hindi author Shivani. Uh, so in uh, uh, his mother's memory, he has set up this a Shivani Center for Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and Other Indian Languages. Uh, so Mrinal, Mrinal Pandey, the uh, famous TV anchor, uh, also happens to be the uh, sister of uh, Muktesh Pant, uh, who was our alumnus. Uh, and uh, both Mrinal and Muktesh, uh, uh, they have set up this center. And the purpose of this center is to give a soft landing to uh, some of our students uh, who have done their school educations in Hindi or other regional languages, and when they come to IIT, uh, they suddenly find, uh, uh, you know, the English uh, uh, instructions uh, to be a bit daunting. And I think uh, this uh, center will really provide them some kind of a uh, soft landing. And in fact, uh, uh, Kantesh is associated with this. Uh, some of the few notable scientific innovations I just want to point out. Uh, uh, we uh, have developed this uh, touch-sensitive watch as a part of our National Center for Flexible Electronics. In fact, uh, this was done by Professor Siddharth Panda of Chemical Engineering Department. Uh, I, I just saw that he was here. Uh, then uh, Bhu Parikshak, which is a soil testing device which can test the quality of the soil uh, quickly. This was again developed by Professor Jayan Singh of uh, Chemical Engineering Department and uh, several other uh, uh, sort of technologies which have been uh, listed here. All of them are being commercialized and licensed. Uh, and uh, this is a matter of great satisfaction that uh, we have achieved uh, a, um, uh, a maturity level where the technologies are getting uh, you know, marketed and productized. <clears throat> uh, we have significantly improved our international collaborations. We are having a a joint degree program with the uh, National Jautong University, New York University, Latrobe. Uh, as a part of this, uh, students spend uh, part of the time in IIT Kanpur and part of the time, uh, let us say, in New York University, and they get degrees uh, from both these uh, universities. So for example, currently about 29 students are registered for joint degree programs in National Jautong University, and about uh, five PhD students are registered for joint degree program in uh, NYU, uh, New York University, uh, and so on. <coughs> these are some of the MOUs that uh, we have signed uh, uh, recently. Uh, we have uh, taken a significant expansion 
uh, in our academic area. In fact, our existing academic area is 1,66,000 square meter. We are adding an addition of 1,20,000 square meter. So almost 0.8 of our uh, existing academic area. So we are almost doubling uh, the academic area. Uh, these are uh, some of the new buildings uh, which have been already uh, sort of inaugurated, Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex. Uh, this will now be the largest academic area building. Earlier faculty building uh, was uh, one of the largest, but uh, now uh, this building will be the largest. And uh, uh, these are you know few buildings uh, which have been recently inaugurated. Uh, we already uh, have built a new uh, type 3 apartments, a multi-storied complex. Uh, one block of 56 apartments uh, was recently inaugurated and now being occupied by faculty members. Uh, there are uh, several other buildings are in the, uh, are upcoming. Uh, a new hall of residence uh, is being built. This hall will be ready by May, June time frame. Uh, this has a capacity of about 800 students, uh, but we still need to do more. Uh, we actually have a shortfall of sitting capacity of almost 3,000 students, and uh, that really requires uh, to be done. Uh, uh, we are now set up a very ambitious project of uh, uh, setting up a School of Medical Sciences and Technology uh, named after our donor Rakesh Gangawal. Uh, uh, and the basic idea is to uh, consolidate uh, our research in healthcare uh, and life sciences uh, that has been done in the institute, in the Department of Biological Sciences, uh, in uh, a center for medtech device fabrications uh, that is there. We have an ICMR uh, center of excellence uh, uh, and uh, several other uh, health sciences research that are being carried out in uh, different departments. Uh, as a part of the school, uh, we will set up a, uh, a uh, 450 bedded super specialty hospital and uh, several centers of excellence uh, which will do interdisciplinary research at the intersection of uh, engineering and uh, medicine. Uh, we of course don't want to start any undergraduate medical program. The idea is not to start an MBBS or an MD program, uh, but to do research uh, at uh, frontiers of uh, 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 healthcare at the intersection uh, of uh, science, engineering, and uh, uh, medicine. This is a proposed uh, site. Uh, this is just behind uh, uh, Hall of Residence 10. So if you have an opportunity to visit, uh, I think I would, uh, again, encourage you to take a walk uh, on that side uh, of the site. Uh, for uh, this school, uh, we received uh, a very generous contributions from Rakesh uh, Gangawal, 1975 batch alumnus and also founder of Indigo Airlines. And uh, apart from that, we have uh, founding donors from Muktesh Pant, uh, who I already mentioned has also given money for Shivani Center, uh, but uh, he has very generously contributed uh, 2.5 million US dollars uh, uh, for the medical school as well. Uh, Dr. Dev Juneja, Heman Jalan, and Anil Bansal. Uh, each of them has given 2.5 million. And uh, we have from Deepak Narula, who uh, recently uh, joined as the co-founder uh, of the school. Uh, as I mentioned uh, that uh, we have set up uh, several uh, uh, centers of excellence. I will just talk about uh, one center of excellence uh, which has uh, already uh, uh, taken a very major project. Uh, so center of excellence for cardiovascular research uh, is developing an artificial heart, a left ventricular uh, assist device. Uh, so uh, uh, current cost uh, of a left ventricular assist device, uh, current implant is about one crore. Uh, and uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, uh, uh, he proposed uh, to us that uh, if you can bring down uh, the cost of this implant from one crore to let's say about 10 lakhs or so, uh, then about 15,000 uh, end stage heart failure patients' lives can be saved uh, who are not able to afford uh, this. Uh, we uh, have assembled a team of, a uh, very interdisciplinary team with faculty members from material science, uh, from uh, chemistry, from mechanical engineering, from electrical engineering. Uh, we already have some alpha prototype uh, sort of ready and maybe in six months uh, we can undertake uh, animal trials and maybe after an year uh, clinical trials. So it's about a complex project, will take about two years time uh, 
uh, to realize, uh, but uh, uh, we have uh, made significant progress. Uh, in fact, uh, we had recently uh, had undertaken a seminar uh, where we gave uh, uh, the plan and the presentations to top cardiac surgeons of the country, which included Dr. Devi Shetty and uh, Dr. Naresh Trehan and Dr. Ramakan Panda. Uh, and uh, it was very well appreciated. And after that, uh, uh, Dr. Devi Shetty wrote uh, this article in the Times of India, uh, which again uh, gave significant visibility uh, to our project. Uh, we are, of course, uh, constantly looking to raise resources uh, for this uh, project. Uh, and here are certain opportunities, uh, since all of you are rich and wealthy alumni, uh, I would strongly encourage you to uh, contribute to our uh, alma mater. Uh, 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 and I'm sure that um, uh, each of you can contribute, big or small, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, uh, you know, we uh, greatly welcome, uh, you know, your support. Uh, recently, I think uh, we have professionalized our alumni engagements. Uh, we have set up this uh, Section 8 company, IIT Kanpur Development Foundation which will work as a development office. Uh, Kapil Kaul, who is here, he has been hired as a CEO. I think some of you have met. Uh, uh, he's a very experienced uh, industry professional. Uh, earlier, he was working as a vice president in IIT Bombay development office. IIT Bombay uh, also has a similar uh, development office. And uh, as uh, the dean uh, in IIT Bombay, I had a lot of opportunity to interact with Kapil. And then finally, I persuaded him to join IIT Kanpur. So here. Uh, uh, he is uh, as the CEO of uh, IIT Kanpur Development Foundation. And uh, uh, that has resulted in uh, uh, our uh, significant increase in alumni donation. Uh, last year, we received 114 crores uh, in donations. And as I mentioned, uh, thanks to the support uh, from uh, all of you, uh, this year we have already touched 120 and we may reach by 31st March about 150. Uh, provided all these reunions, alumni reunions that you are having contribute to make this from 120 to 150. But uh, I think uh, this has been a significant uh, uh, up, uh, up uh, in the, our alumni donation. So I indeed want to, uh, uh, you know, express my gratitude to uh, both, uh, you know, the alumni as well as, you know, the corporate uh, CSR. These are our major individual donors uh, in the past two years. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> I hope we will continue to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, their goodwill and support. As I mentioned, we are uh, uh, doing a uh, uh, lot of uh, reunions. Uh, these are class of 90 and 86. Uh, uh, recently we did class of 1996 uh, also we had. Uh, and, of course, we are continuing, you know, uh, six or seven more reunions in the next two months. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, future roadmaps and challenges, uh, 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 we are on a growth trajectory, uh, so we would like to complete the expansion of the academic infrastructure. Uh, we all, all, with this uh, expansion of the academic infrastructure, I think we are quite fine with the academic infrastructure, but we need to build. Uh, residential accommodation, particularly for the student hostels, which are in a crunch mode right now. Uh, and uh, we actually need to raise resources uh, for this. In the next two years, uh, we will see the completion of uh, this super speciality hospital and all centers of excellence as a part of the Gangawal School of uh, Medical Science and Technology. Uh, in the coming years, uh, we are also thinking of uh, setting up a school of entrepreneurship uh, and a school of data sciences uh, as well. So I think these are uh, some of the two activities uh, uh, that can be done. Uh, in terms of uh, challenges, uh, uh, re we are already facing a severe constraint in terms of resources. Uh, the ministry's uh, capital grant uh, has been consistently going down. Uh, all the infrastructure that you saw has been built with loans. Uh, nowadays, you know, the ministry does not give any grant uh, for any academic infrastructure. So there is this higher education funding agency, HEFA. Uh, so we have taken a loan of about 600 crores. Uh, and uh, the deal is uh, that uh, we have to pay uh, these loans uh, over a period of 10 years. So we are paying 60 crores uh, per year 
installment as a loan. Uh, but the interest uh, on the loan is being paid by the ministry. So for as far as we are concerned, it is like an interest-free loan uh, in that sense because uh, the interest is being paid by the ministry. This HEFA is being administered through Canara, Canara Bank. Uh, and uh, since you know we are paying 60 crores, obviously this is cutting uh, into our internal resources. And this is really a, a significant drain uh, for this. Uh, so, for example, uh, we need to uh, raise resources for more hostels, uh, for maintenance uh, of the infrastructures. Uh, so now, of course, uh, uh, there is this issue of uh, raising the resources. Uh, <clears throat> so currently, I think, as I mentioned, that we pay about 60 crores every year as installment. We have our, inter our internal revenue of about 110 crores. Uh, so 60 crores, almost, uh, you know, 60% of that uh, simply goes away into... Uh, payment of uh, these uh, HEFA loans. Uh, so we are looking for uh, support from alumni, of course, in terms of resource generations, I already mentioned. Maybe Kapil uh, will give you uh, a more detailed background. Uh, but you can also get involved in several institute activities. Uh, uh, our board has recently introduced the position of uh, professor of practice. Uh, so, uh, if uh, you are working in the corporates uh, and don't even have a master's and PhD degree, uh, but have several years of experience, like in your case about 30-40 years of experience in the industry, uh, you can actually get engaged with the institute and the position of uh, professor of practice. Uh, we also have a visiting professor of practice positions if you cannot join uh, sort of full time. And there are, of course, uh, for those of you who are in academics and R&D, you are most welcome uh, to get engaged with the institute as a visiting fac faculty or an uh, adjunct faculty. Uh, uh, as you know that uh, these are these uh, uh, ranking agencies, uh, particularly I will talk about the QS, uh, which uh, actually ranks the institute uh, uh, and a major component uh, of this ranking is in the form of uh, academic reputation and employer's reputation. So they normally do the survey, uh, they carry out uh, the survey and 40% uh, uh, weightage is to academic reputations and 20% weightage is to employer reputations. Uh, and uh, they do undertake uh, the survey and based upon the survey results, uh, I think that is sort. So I would uh, request you to uh, sort of volunteer for participating in these surveys. If you are in academics, then maybe volunteer uh, to participate in survey for academic reputations. And if you are working in the corporates and have employed IIT Kanpur graduates, uh, then you can participate in employer reputations and hopefully rate uh, IIT Kanpur good, and that may have improved the ranking. So that's all uh, I have uh, from uh, my side. Uh, if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer. Yeah, so any questions, anything you have, and I'll be. What is your number one kind of thing that you want? The number one thing that, as I already mentioned, that uh, our priority is to uh, two folds. One is to raise the resources, okay? And we want to raise the resources for two things. One is uh, for our infrastructure, and particularly, I would say that for our hostel infrastructures. I think that is something that is really requires an improvement. Uh, so that is one thing. Uh, second thing, all of you may be in an influential positions in corporates uh, or in academia, and I would really like to get alumni engaged with the institute uh, in a very meaningful manner. Uh, we have enabled these visiting faculty and visiting professor of practice positions, and I think those involvement uh, would really help and benefits the institute in many ways in, of course, uh, uh, improving the industry academia interactions, academia academia interactions at the international levels, and also help improve the visibility and the ranking. 
So I would strongly encourage all of you to get engaged uh, with the institutes uh, uh, in the coming years. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, that we are constantly looking for now raising the resources. And I would strongly encourage you to contribute in big and small, and I want to emphasize this because uh, even a small token contributions will go a long way in helping the institute. We have uh, 40,000 alumni, and even if one alum gives just 50,000 rupees or one lakh rupees, this would be like a very big sum. So I think we would we we do not want from everyone a million dollar or a you know a billion dollar donations. We want big and small, whatever you can contribute. And I would strongly encourage you to get engaged with the institute and work with the institute in improving its visibility, uh, its standing in both academics and help improve the institutes in industry academia collaborations. So I think this is really our number one ask. Thank you. Yes. What do you think will take, uh, what are the biggest issues handling or inhibiting the best faculty to come in, your understanding? Yeah. What all do you need to do to make this perhaps one of the most attractive places to get the best faculty? Yeah. So I think, uh, uh, so there are three things uh, which affects. One is uh, the uh, employment for the spouses. Okay, so that is uh, sort of one thing. Uh, now, uh, we are enabling that through many ways because what happens is that on the campus when a uh, lot of activities get generated, for example, if you have a lot of incubation activities, a lot of companies, there is this uh, techno park where R&D uh, uh, labs have been set up. Uh, and then if you have this medical school, so employment opportunities get created on the campus itself uh, for the spouses. So I think there is a need for, if, if the campus is more active and vibrant in terms of many activities, then, but that is continues to be one, one important po pro, uh, point. Uh, second problem uh, is uh, city of Kanpur. There is a certain issue which uh, we cannot uh, address, uh, but, uh, 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 Kanpur is improving in terms of its connectivity, uh, either in terms of roads uh, with Delhi and also in terms of air, and I hopefully that problem will get solved. Uh, the third problem has been uh, the um, adequate uh, healthcare infrastructure uh, in the city, uh, and uh, this has been voiced by many young and middle uh, faculty members. In fact, unfortunately, uh, we had a um, uh, we had a death of a faculty member just yesterday, uh, and uh, uh, that was actually under quite unfortunate uh, circumstances. And uh, we have had uh, in the past uh, also. Uh, hopefully, this super specialty hospital uh, will give will be a by. I mean, it's a secondary. Although our, our primary aim is to sort of uh, improve uh, the research and healthcare infrastructures, but its secondary is also uh, providing uh, this kind of a. Uh, super speciality hospital in the city of Kanpur, which uh, see, which uh, currently lacks. Uh, the city of Lucknow has uh, many uh, state-of-the-art healthcare infrastructures. So these are certain things uh, which uh, makes it attractive. Uh, of course, uh, there are certain niche areas in which um, IIT Kanpur uh, has an advantage over other IITs, and we are able to attract faculty members in those areas, uh, which. Uh, I already mentioned, like you know, cybersecurity and uh, flexible electronics and so on. So I think we continue to attract uh, this. We are now building a portfolio in sustainable energy and and things like that. So we have been, I think, able to attract uh, uh, good faculty, and I, I don't see that to be uh, like a significant issue. Uh, but of course, there is some issue uh, because of the city uh, when it comes to comparing, let's say, Bombay and Delhi, uh, that cannot be solved. I think. What about education for children? No, I think education for the children, city of Kanpur is uh, fairly good. I think, yeah. I just want to make a comment. I saw the number of people you hired, and I know, like, me, with my daughter, with an American university, so I think this kind of number is really impressive. I just want to thank you and your team for making that happen and making that number 200 or more. Thank you. Thank you very much.
age goes between 60 to 65, and most of them are recently retired or going to be retired. So the focus currently actually for us will be that okay, that we are still uh, we have a lot of experience. We are still into that age group where we can contribute, and we would like to contribute. Yeah, and the capacity there actually because we have our time now at our school. So how can we really leverage that this thing like the mentorship or consulting, advisorship, or something like that? And this is the this is the way actually we can contribute to that. Yeah. So I think uh, you can get involved with our incubator and techno park. Uh, in fact, our incubator has a network of alumni. Uh, Sanjeev is actually uh, has been involved, and there are several other alumni uh, have been involved. So you can definitely get uh, involved uh, uh, as our incubator. Uh, let me just tell you that currently, and I think. Um, uh, myself, uh, being an alumnus of IIT Kanpur, having done my MTech and PhD, and my brother did his BTech uh, here. Uh, right now, the alumni are engaged uh, with the institute uh, uh, in, a, you know, in a in a very very significant way. I'll just point out some examples. The IIT Kanpur Board of Governors, all members are IIT Kanpur alumni. All. Except the chairman, Dr. Radha Krishnan, who is the, the former ISRO chairman, all members. We have members. We have three members: Saurabh Srivastava, uh, Pradeep Goel, and Dr. Manoj Gonuguntala. Three are IIT Kanpur alumni who are nominated by the government. The additional secretary, uh, who is a member of the board, Rakesh Ranjan, uh, he also happens to be an IIT Kanpur alumnus. Uh, there is a nominee of uh, UP government, uh, Mahesh Gupta, who also happens to be IIT Kanpur alumnus, uh, 1975 batch. And I, as the director, also as an IIT Kanpur alumnus. Currently, the board comprises of all IIT Kanpur alumni. I think this has never happened. This is the first time I can tell you all the board members are IIT Kanpur alumni. <laughs> so we have uh, our incubator. Uh, our incubator also is a Section 8 company. Uh, the, the board members are also IIT Kanpur alumni of the Section 8 company. We have on the board Saurabh Srivastava again. So Dr. Saurabh Srivastava is on our, has been on our incubator ever since the Section 8 company was formed. We have Srikant Shastri, who is also um, another uh, uh, board member. And we have now initiated the process of onboarding Dr. Ajay Kumar, who is just retired as a uh, defense secretary, uh, also on the board of... Then we have a techno park, uh, which is again a Section 8 company. Uh, on its board, uh, we have uh, Mr. Lalit Jalan, uh, who also is an IIT Kanpur uh, alumnus. Uh, and uh, on this uh, uh, medical school also, we, the operations of the hospital will be run through a uh, separate uh, Section 8 company, uh, uh, where Mr. Arun Seth uh, is also on the board. Uh, of that section at company. And in fact, uh, for our uh, medical school project, large number of alumni are directly or indirectly involved uh, as uh, mentors and so on. For example, uh, for Center of Excellence for Medical Technology, we have uh, support from people like uh, Yashdeep Kumar, and us, who is working with Stryker Corporations and so on. So I think, uh, I mean, at least 50 alumni I know are directly engaged I mean, directly means being there on the board members or advisors or uh, uh, mentors officially. So they are like sort of directly engaged. And of course, uh, the indirectly engaged alumni is very, very large number. And as I mentioned that we have now have a professor of practice positions, I think there's something we would uh, really like to have something. For example, Rajiv Tra, we would, I would really like him to be a, like a visiting professor of practice in computer science department and share his knowledge in uh, networking and other things. I think uh, that would be uh, really good to have. So we have, uh, you know, those uh, uh, those kind of opportunities possible. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I think that is, we have this NPTEL uh, program. Uh, so there, if you see the NPTEL YouTube channel, you will find a large number of courses, uh, maybe more than 300 courses by different faculty members across IITs, not just IIT Kanpur. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I also have my own course on computer networks uh, on the, in, in the NPTEL, NPTEL channel. So on also on the wireless communications. So I, I'm not aware of, but I'm sure it will be. In structural engineering also there will be some, by some other IIT professor, if not IIT Kanpur. Uh, so it is available. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so I, I, I think, uh, for example, this year uh, 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 we filed 107 patents this year. Uh, last year also the number was uh, 100 plus. And in fact, in the last two, three years, uh, I think uh, we have shown a very steady rise. Maybe before that, you know, we were filing about, uh, you know, in the 50s and so on. This year we have filed 107 patents. So... Uh, by the way, I, I mean, since I work in this area and since you talked about 5G, uh, maybe I can, uh, since uh, it's my direct involvement, uh, so I have uh, several, myself, uh, several patents uh, and uh, we have a standards essential patent, what is called SCPs. And in fact, uh, my group was the one which led the IEEE standard on uh, uh, software defined networkings in 5G SDN. So this is uh, IEEE 1930. The standard has become now IEEE 1930. And it is, uh, I would say that it is the first IEEE standard that has come out of purely Indian efforts. Uh, uh, and uh, where the working group chair was uh, me and, you know, my colleague. And, uh, and we have been contributing to 3GPP uh, uh, in uh, wireless communications. Uh, and uh, it has, uh, and as you know, the standard essential patent is a patent which has become part of the standard. So, uh, so I think uh, yes. Uh, I mean, short answer is yes. We are doing, and uh, uh, and I think all these technologies are being licensed uh, with various considerations, like either the royalty sharings or uh, uh, or you know straight sell. So both these things are there. So thank you for your presentation from the institute perspective. From the students' perspective, what do you hear are the major gripes they have against the institution? What are the gaps they see? So you give some shed some light on that. And a follow-up question would be, what's the assessment of the mental health of the student these days? Yeah. So I think uh, uh, from a student's point of view, uh, what I would say that uh, we, in IIT Kanpur, we have a um, very good uh, infrastructure uh, in terms of uh, uh, 
uh, their co-curricular and sports activities. Uh, we had very good hostels, but with the recent increase in the number of hostels, uh, there has been a crisis uh, in terms of students uh, have to share the rooms like, you know, the, in the double rooms, there are three students are sharing and so on. So this uh, definitely has been a major complaint uh, from the students. As I mentioned that uh, we have a Hall 14, which we are building uh, by the maybe May or June, this will relieve uh, some, uh, st uh, some stress, but more hostels uh, need to be built uh, in order to come to a very sort of a uh, comfortable uh, state. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of mental health, uh, actually, uh, IIT Kanpur al always had a very robust uh, uh, counselling service, uh, and uh, we undertook a special efforts of now hiring professional counsellors. Uh, so uh, now we have uh, uh, as many as five uh, professional counsellors. In fact, uh, that recruitment three recruitments were done very recently and uh, they are actually quite uh, good and plus a network of student volunteers the seniors and all uh, which work uh, and uh, that has helped uh, address uh, you know uh, uh, these uh, problems but uh, i would say that a um, uh, lot more uh, needs to be done uh, to uh, fully as, as, uh, create a situation where uh, we are able to take care of uh, all their problems. Uh, the other issue which bothers the students uh, always is about their placement. Uh, and uh, uh, our student placement cell has been uh, recently uh, like uh, doing a very good job. Uh, and uh, this year was uh, really remarkable, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we received as many as uh, 32 international offers, uh, you know, where the students were directly got placed uh, in international companies. Uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, uh, so. Placement-wise, also is good. Uh, we are also enabling uh, in in terms of academics. The students also need a lot of flexibility and freedom to choose courses and so on, which, uh, as I mentioned, we have enabled and we have further enhanced it. Uh, keeping uh, in times with changing scenario, we have now students' entrepreneurship policy. Uh, if the students want to take uh, one year off from the academics and try the companies, they can do now, so it is possible. Uh, some students, after graduation, they want to start a company and, uh, uh, but suppose they are not able to do well uh, after two years. Uh, then they may want to come back to the company and ours, so we have introduced the policy of deferred placement so the students can come back and appear uh, through the placement and get a job. So that facility is also there. So these are some of the enabling uh, provisions uh, that uh, we have been doing, uh, but uh, it's always, uh, you know, a work in progress. Uh, uh, so it's a uh, lot more can be done. I mean, a lot more has been done, but uh, I'm sure a lot more can be done uh, to improve a uh, student's experience uh, on the campus. Thank you for making that work. Yeah. I mean, all I can say uh, is that I, I mean, I completely agree with this. And, and an IIT students, uh, uh, they also go to this uh, retress, uh, you know, right from the sort of first year. Uh, everyone wants international jobs or international, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, summer trainings uh, and those kind of things. Uh, and uh, uh, that is why I think the role of our counseling service uh, plays a role. We, uh, IIT Kanpur's uh, counseling service uh, uh, doesn't work only when a student is in problem. Uh, it is actually having a very robust system of uh, interacting with the students, uh, you know, right uh, from their first year onwards. Uh, there are some students uh, who are facing these problems of uh, not getting adjusted uh, to the socio-academic milieu of the institute because of the language issues. And in fact, I showed that uh, that is where the efforts we will do through Shivani Center. Uh, we, uh, uh, we are still, I would say that we are still not there uh, where uh, we can have a system of providing a holistic, moral education and value education uh, to the students. Uh, in a sense where, as you talked of this uh, uh, spiritual quotients and uh, emotional quotients, uh, I think a structural mechanism does not yet exist. Let me put it like sort of this way. But there are efforts both in informal ways, uh, you know, that are being undertaken. Uh, so, I mean, that's all, you know, we have been attempting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's what I said. There are informal mechanisms, but we don't have sort of a structural mechanism in the part of the curriculum or something like that. No, no, we can certainly have that. See, what happens is that, you know, uh, in IIT kind of, or any university for that matter, uh, everything this needs to be anchored by faculty members. So, you know, it cannot come from the administrator. Like, I can't say that, you know, let's start like a Jivan Vidya course. So, but if faculty members come forward and do, it is possible. So, mechanisms exist. But, you know, you just need to create an environment where you know, faculty members can come forward and float such courses. But we, as I said, we have a mechanism uh, which is available if visiting professors or visiting faculty or, you know, external experts, they can come and give guest lectures and get engaged. It is possible through them. Yeah. Sometimes mundane, you know, bureaucratic and clerical and whatnot. You should reward uh, faculty members, faculty members with industry. That's, you know, that's the thing because I think in, in our thing, it's generally industry people who are on our, uh, on our um, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's very important to be in all the standards, and that's also a way you should be, you know, upgrading the <coughs> standards of the other, other systems. Okay, so there are no further uh, questions. Of course, I'm available for interactions outside. So thank you very much. I think, uh, I think so. Thank you, sir, for giving such an insightful overview of the Institute. 
I would now request Professor Kantesh Balani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to address the gathering. A very good morning and a very warm welcome to all uh, class of 1982 and their family members. Welcome back to your home. So homecoming is a time when you could revisit where it all started. You could probably also go to your hall, hall two, hall three, and had those probably nostalgic moments, what actually made you what you are currently. Also, it is a time to reconnect. Uh, with your own roots, also to be able to help for the growth and nurturing of the institute by contributing in some very special way. As you all mentioned, you have, I think, a vast experience. You also are at a vantage point. With your experience, with your connections, you can always give back your time, your mentorship, and whatever you can in your own personal capacity. So again, we extend, first of all, a very thank you and our sincere gratitude uh, for helping the institute in multiple ways. Class of 92, 1982 had established various uh, support and has helped and supported various projects including student initiatives, scholarships, ca cash awards, team motorsports fund, community welfare projects like cam campus worker fund, COVID-19, Shiksha Sopan, opportunity school fund, faculty initiatives, chemical engineering, electrical, faculty fellowships and also multiple others like ITK Development Foundation, Enable Online, Infrastructure, Student Activities, Annual Gift Programs, and also mainly the Class of 1982, two Young Faculty Research Fellowships, which is PK Kelkar 1982 Batch Fellowship. Uh, this year actually started with a bank, uh, with MOU signing by Rakesh Gangwalji in April, and uh, it was followed by a Foundation Stone Link Ceremony in July. This is a disruptive project which Professor Karandekar earlier mentioned. It is going to really change the visage of uh, healthcare in uh, the campus as well as the, uh, will serve the community. Also following that, we also had Jeet Bindra Unit Operation and Innovation Lab inauguration, where Jeet Bindra ji himself had come and inaugurated this particular lab. Uh, following that, we also had inauguration of uh, Shivani Center for Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and, and other Indian languages, where Muktesh Panji also had come by and uh, inaugurated the center. Also, we had uh, Mehta Family Center for Engineering and Medicine, supported by Rahul Mehta Foundation. And then uh, Chandrakanta Keshwan Center, so Sudhakar Keshwanji also visited the campus in November sometime and spent uh, some time out here. Also, uh, uh, IIT Kanpur is very keen on engaging with alumni. So there was a delegation from IIT Kanpur which visited uh, USA, uh, New York, Washington, Chicago, and San Francisco during the time of May, where, where we could connect to more than 600 plus alumni. So that is our commitment that we would like to remain engaged with alumni. And as also it was mentioned that we celebrated 63 years uh, of uh, IIT Kanpur Foundation. And herein we could, uh, recognized multiple distinguished alumnus awardees, 11 of them. We had uh, two distinguished service awardees, two young alumnus awardee, and one Satendra Ke Dubey memorial awardee. And also we recognized two institute fellows, Professor Verma and Professor Srivastava, for the ex 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 exceptional and excellent services rendered by all these awardees. A previous eve of that, uh, on the eve of this, we also could uh, celebrate, we could uh, organize a cultural evening Antar, and which highlighted the glimpses from Tagore, Hindustani vocal recital, and also Carnatic vocal recital. And herein it witnessed uh, our BUG chairman, Dr. Radha Krishnan himself perform. So it was a very, very well received by the community of uh, the campus. Again, by back to reunion, it is nothing but a tradition of giving back. It's a time when we can leave a legacy that will reflect how IIT Kanpur actually has helped us in coming here and you know facing life in some sense. 
Uh, earlier, nine, class of 1984 has pledged two crores. Uh, class of 1995 and class of 1979 had pledged 1.7 and 1.5 crores, and that helped in making the 795 waterfront. And this looks so beautiful. I think if you get a chance, we would really request you to please, if you get a chance, do pay a visit to it. So this is the class of 1979 and class of 1995. So this has really revamped the front, the fountain of library. Class of 1970 has taken up a project for a gym uh, upgradation uh, out here. And they have pledged 2.5 crores for upgrading the same. And again, we uh, had multiple such initiatives, so starting from PVCC 1965 batch, uh, Khadim Dewan building, BSB building, outreach building, uh, Park 67, faculty lounge, squash courts, Rajiv Motwani, yoga aerobics, an Ashiana shopping complex, opportunity school, waterfront 795, Ranjit Singh Roji Shiksha Kendra, Shivani Center, and gym upgradation. So there are multiple such avenues which are again opening up. And again, it was uh, again highlighted that we require really strong support in uh, uh, construction of uh, hostels as well as other infrastructure needs of the institute. Again, we, we had multiple unions planned this year. We had at least 15 planned in-house. And first one was uh, held in uh, June. And apparently, this batch had uh, its graduation online. So they had a theme of convocation. So once they came here, they really celebrated you know, the theme of convocation uh, out here. It was held in June. And following that, we had the class of 1972, the Golden Jubilee reunion held in November. Uh, following that, we had uh, class of 1986, who could also come here in December last year. And again, then class of 1996, again in December. And again, uh, class of 1997, uh, again in the end of December. It was the longest. It crossed two, two I think, years. So 19, 2022 and 2023, it should be th 30th December 2022 to 1st December, 1st January 2023. So it was the longest one, anyway. So we already had six reunions, and this is the seventh one, and we have uh, more uh, more planned. I think eight more are planned, so totally we had 15 this year. We also could uh, host Alumni Day on 25th of uh, December this year, and this is the time where we could really connect and grow the bonds with the institute. And there are multiple such initiatives. Uh, some of them are like uh, RN Biswas Chair, which was launched by a former students of his, uh, Professor T.R. Vishwanathan uh, faculty chair, and also young faculty fellowships. Again, this was the drive given by the former students. For students also, we really strongly urge your support in maybe incepting maybe the infrastructure, mainly the infrastructure, but other things also like scholarships, financial aids, Sayog financial aids, endowed name scholarships, merit awards, travel grants, also for student development programs. These are very much the need, because students, many times, they, once they come, they really lack that particular uh, I mean, funds available to come and settle down initially, at least. And also the infrastructure for hosting them. Hostels, I think, are also the key drive need currently. So for our funds, we have been continuously growing. This year, we also already have crossed 120 crores. And 70 crores have come from alumni. So we, this, we really thank, again, alumni for their continued support in many, many, many ways. Uh, also, we are coming up with multiple initiatives. So we have project management system where we provide, uh, we are creating a portal where whenever someone donates, so each and every rupee gets accounted for, it provides a very transparent system where anyone can actually see the how the funds are utilized, what are the, where are the annual reports, what is the work progress, any personal notes. Everything is available at a single portal. So this also helps one inculcate the interest and also uh, build that particular trust, uh, which is you know, one, one requires when they donate something to a funding agency, to any uh, beneficiary. Uh, along, 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 <coughs> along with that, we also have a magazine called Kritagya, where we give a special thanks to all of our donors. This was a version uh, last year, and we are coming up with a newer version this year. Uh, to be launched sometime in end of January, Kritagya. And this again will be a very, I mean, will be adding more names to this particular list. There are other opportunities, as you mentioned, that you are very rich in terms of uh, your experience, or you can actually give some mentorship. We really request you to please connect us. 
so with for any csr partnership if you are, have good links available with multiple industries please come forward and we have mr rajat i'll request him if he's here he can raise hand maybe he's maybe out here so if you have any uh, links please uh, get in touch with him and we'll be happy to you know take it forward for there we are also coming up with a planned giving program <coughs> excuse me so planned uh, giving also is a way of i think contributing back to it kanpur uh, in terms of wealth rather than the income so it will be helpful if you can you know provide us a plan of uh, or a wish for giving a future transfer of assets uh, through cash stocks retirement assets life insurance or will or any rec uh, recoverable uh, living trust so that way it can actually be taken forward and again it is uh, it kanpur foundation is actually eligible to receive such uh, funds or gifts so we also are accommodating that and there are multiple ways in which you can take it forward uh, planned giving products which can be public pub, uh, publicly traded securities they can be retirement plans life insurance policy and will or recoverable trust uh, there are also uh, multiple things which you may require like what uh, do i need to do how can i donate so these things also we can provide you if you have interest i'll request kapil ji if we can you know maybe you can get in touch with him i'll request kapil ji to please uh, you know get in touch in a case anything is uh, required uh, and at the end i would again thank people who actually do the work on the back end who had made this particular visit uh, i think amenable to all of you uh, taking care of your travel receiving you maybe arranging food Uh, organizing this all event all all such events i hope you are having a good time out here yes so this is a team from itk development foundation and also there is a team from uh, dean of resource and alumni office so there are around 25 such people who work on the back end and try to provide a very very smooth uh, experience to all of you so with this i thank you and welcome i hope you will have a great time thank you Thank you a round of applause. Really. Thank you sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we move on to the next segment of the ceremony which includes the felicitation of distinguished alumni. The distinguished alumni award is the highest award given by IIT Kanpur to its alumni in recognition of their outstanding achievements. It's our pleasure to felicitate past TA awardees of the class of 1982 for their outstanding contributions. I would request Professor Becker and Dikka to kindly felicitate. Requesting Professor Ashutosh Sharma, DA recipient of the year 2007, to kindly come up on stage. Requesting Dr. Rajiv Desai, DA recipient of the year 2007, to kindly come up on stage. I'd like to call upon uh, Professor Kantesh Balani to kindly come up. Now I would like to call upon Professor Kantesh Balani to come and up and read the citation of Distinguished Alumnus Awardee, Mr. Rajiv Patra, dear recipient of the year 2020. Mr Batra is a founder of Palo Alto Networks and was responsible for building and leading the engineering department from inception at Palo Alto Networks he held many positions including founder member office of ceo 
and senior vice president of engineering. Palo Alto Networks is the largest independent enterprise security company in the world. Prior to founding Palo Alto, Mr. Batra was the vice president of engineering at Peribit Networks. Peribit Networks built industry-leading products in the area of WAN optimization and WAN acceleration. It was acquired by Juniper Networks in July of 2005. Dr. Batra was also the founder and VP of Engineering at Vital Sign Networks that was later acquired by International Network Services in 1998. Mr. Batra was awarded the 2012 Entrepreneurial Achievement Award by University of Wisconsin-Madison. He was also a chair of the Board of Visitors of Computer Science Department at University of Wisconsin-Madison, board member of University of Wisconsin Foundation, and a trustee of Honolulu Museum of Art. Mr. Batra holds MS degree in Computer Science from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, 1983. IT Kanpur confers upon Dr. Rajiv Batra, the Distinguished Alumnus Award 2020. Request Mr. Rajiv Patra to give acceptance, please. Speech, please. <laughs> I really didn't have any uh, prepared remarks or anything. I just uh, want to say that it has been a, I'm humble to receive this award. It was a big surprise to me. And uh, when I look back on my life, you know, all the five years I spent here, I remember coming in here in 77, just fresh out of school like all of us, and all the things which the IIT did to change our lives, change our outlook to life, see, make us feel confident in ourselves and solving difficult problems. And when I went abroad and started working in different companies, all the knowledge I had, all the way of thinking, critically thinking, not being afraid, being able to take on really difficult challenges and making it happen didn't feel that difficult because IIT prepared us for it by giving us things which were literally felt impossible to do and we could pos in m most cases than not, we were able to achieve it. So when you faced real difficult problems in real life, that was, uh, you basically uh, look back on the experiences you had here. So I had to, al I was always thankful that what, I, what IIT did to taking, uh, taking a, uh, st a student from sheltered home life and changing them to a different person and being able to uh, 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 manage the challenges of the life. So thank you, IIT. Thank you for all of you guys being great friends and giving a great time, having, letting me have a great time five years here. So thank you very much. We'll now have a MOU signing ceremony in between Mr. Rajiv Batra and Professor Kantesh Balani, Dean, Resources of, Dean of Resources and Alumni. Mr. Rajiv Batra has generously donated 275,000 US dollars to support Rajiv and Ritu Batra Chair, Rajiv and Ritu Batra New Faculty Fellowship, and Rajiv and Ritu Batra Student Award in the domain of cybersecurity.
Thank you, sirs. Now I would request Professor Ashutosh Sharma to kindly share the experience and say a few words on behalf of the batch. So how many few words do you need? <laughs> don't, don't, don't forget. Don't forget I'm a professor. I, I teach. <laughs> I mean, uh, guys, I you would totally agree that this was a total uh, roller coaster ride that we heard from the director. Um, you know, I never felt uh, better in my whole life. We came in here at the age of 16. Now we are 61, pretty much a mirror image of what we were. And uh, 16 to 16, uh, 61 has been a very short journey. Very short journey indeed, but very enriching experience. I, I think that uh, the experience that we have had in five years here, um, of course, now that when I tell people, you know, I tell students that I spent five years here, they think I flunked one year. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and which makes sense because then you become professor, right, if you flunk one year, uh, right? Uh, so, so I'm indeed very proud that we were here, we so 40 years ago. Uh, in fact, the stuff that I received today I remember uh, so much our 25th year reunion when we were sitting here. Uh, that's when um, Rajiv Desai and I got uh, this uh, Distinguished Alumnus Award. Um, and uh, I got reminded of that again on the 40th uh, reunion. Uh, wonderful. Uh, so, so I'm very sure that all our batchmates, all of us, uh, have been uh, so happy uh, with this reunion, uh, indeed, and all the development which has happened. Uh, you see, so I think, well, I have been here pretty much uh, since 77, except that gone for eight and a half years to U.S. and then to about the same time in, the Delhi, in Delhi. Uh, but I can, I can truthfully say uh, that there's never been more development uh, in this campus as in the last few years. Uh, it's been a really, really new wave of development, new optimism, new energy, and alumni have been a big part of this uh, journey, this story. Um, and so, of course, we are very thankful uh, to Rajiv Batra for bailing the batch out, uh, <laughs> right? <It is. laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think our dues are paid in full now. <laughs> Not really. Not really. So I, I have to say, I did a back-of-the-envelope calculation very quickly sitting here. So I said, what was 1,000 rupees worth, I mean, in 77? What are they worth now in terms of, you know, the money that we owe? So 1,000 rupees back there uh, in 70s and so on, um, 100 rupees back then are worth 2,500 now. Okay, so that's the, you know, official rate of inflation and everything. It could be more. And so if you were to compute a little bit and say, look, we, uh, you know, institute, uh, contributed at least, uh, you know, maybe 10,000 bucks a year for each one of us uh, as a very, very low rate I'm counting, right? So you, you multiply that by 350, which is how many of us were there. I think the ballpark figure is about 50 crore rupees. Uh, so I think we have made a good beginning uh, in making some contribution, acknowledging uh, all the stuff that we got. So 50 CR is just what the government might have contributed in those terms there, uh, but what we gained out of those 50 CR that government contributed, I think is much, much more than that. Uh, it's just not quantity, the quality of our life and everything else. So anyhow, I'm not here to make a pitch uh, for the dean, uh, okay? It's just, uh, I mean, I'm just, you know, we, we are engineers, we compute numbers, and we, we figure out the logic uh, of it all, uh, and that's what I was presenting. So, uh, of course, we had an extraordinary teachers. Oh, by the way, before I say extraordinary teachers, of course, they were extraordinary students, all of us. Uh, I mean, so I remember, and uh, the cohesion of the class was so, so good. I still cannot believe there are like at least four WhatsApp groups going now uh, in, our, in our batch. Uh, there may be more, there are hidden groups, there are secret groups and everything, but at least four, a bucket group, the bug bug group, the, the all kind of stuff is there, right? And there are 1,000 messages every day. I mean, this is so amazing. Uh, I mean, instead of writing those messages, if we were to work for IIT Kanpur, we could raise so much money. I mean, that, <laughs> absolutely no doubt about it, uh, okay? But it's fantastic. So I think this level of cohesion 
is so good. I think we, we leverage it for the good of uh, you know our alma mater. Uh, we had had extraordinary teachers. I so remember. Uh, in fact, I remember my first day, or was it second day in IIT Kanpur? Uh, so it was in L7, and then director uh, Dr. Sampath, uh, he he pointed out that we were actually the creams, uh, we were cream of the nation. I, I so remember it was such a um, you know wonderful dialogue that he he used to try every year on every incoming batch, unsuspecting people, no doubt, and say so we we took it rather seriously. We thought, oh, indeed, we are the cream of the nation. But after the first midterm exam, uh, <laughs> it, it felt more like a sour cream. Uh, okay, I mean, cream good, but you know, I, I mean, we all, um, you know, we we learned our first lesson in humility here. And no matter how good you were, you thought you were the top of the class, you were top of the state board, you were whatever you were, you were just another brick in the wall, not even a good brick for that matter. <laughs> so anyhow, very good. And that's a lesson which has lasted uh, for all of us uh, for the rest of our lives. Self-governance taught us actually you know, to govern bigger systems. Because everything here is, is just done by people, uh, by students, by teachers. Uh, so, you know, taking responsibility, but having accountability for that responsibility was the great thing that we could learn here. In fact, I remember there was this strike, and then the mess uh, workers went on strike, uh, and we were making our own uh, chapatis, but mostly our own um, omelets, uh, and, um, and we were doing a good job of it, because uh, all the stuff that we could not ask the mess workers to put in there, we were now doing it freely. I mean, all the best of the omelets I've had back then because, you know, I was, I was making them and eating them uh, for sure, and it's fantastic. Of course, we have had so many great, you know, great experiences that shared together. Uh, the cultural festivals where we, there was this booklet came out, we said where culture is a four-day affair. Uh, you know, that's all you had. Uh, you know, to remember culture was like a couple of days, um, uh, and, and it, was, it was so much fun. Uh, computer cards, we were the last generation to use computer cards and punching and everything. These cards were used as for taking lecture notes, uh, mostly, isn't it? I mean, you had a bunch of, uh, the thick uh, pile of uh, computer cards, and you write all lecture notes on them, and after that you get bored, then you make these paper planes out of it and flow them, uh, flow, I mean, fly them uh, when instructor's back is turned. On that. I, I'm not very proud of it, by the way. I'm not re recommending that we do that. Uh, anymore, uh, okay? Uh, but this is something you can't change the history. Uh, and so th this is something which was there, uh, fantastic things. Uh, of course, there was plenty of mischief. I think I should conclude very quickly before I get carried away. Uh, as in every batch and every thing, every college, there's a lot of mischief. Uh, there was some special kind of mischief uh, that used to happen. Uh, I remember some aspects of it. Uh, there was this professor in electrical, very famous, mm -hmm. Ma Pai, Ma Pai, uh, right? Uh, pai, Pai, uh, right? So there's, there's one guy who's calling his home rather midnight, and he was saying, hey, I, I just want to know, this is a burning question in my mind, I got to know now. Uh, professor, he said, yeah, what, is it? what is it? He said, uh, do your daughter call you Ma Pai or Pa Pai? <laughs> and he was calling the other guy, he was saying, uh, is your refrigerator running in the middle of the night? Uh, the professor did go and check the refrigerator. It was running. He said, go catch it. <laughs> it was diversity. I, I saw, see, one thing if I have to conclude from my experience is, is the diversity here in those days, which was so amazing. I mean, all that diversity now disappeared from every campus, not just here, right? Because they become very regional. Remember, there are 23 IITs. There's only one good IIT, but there are 23 IITs now. Uh, and uh, anyhow, uh, you see, but the diversity here was amazing uh, because there were people, as you know, I mean, here from Mumbai. There was a Mumbai gang. There was a Chennai mafia. There was everybody else there. Um, and, and so that taught us amazing lesson about that. And now everybody is the same. Uh, in fact, I remember the Bombay gang. There was Sadashiv Rao and uh, T.L. Leesh were sitting here next door to me. And they were just, you know, come like September, October, November. Uh, they're just asking people, what is this thing called Rajai? I mean, where do you, what is this, you know? 
right? And I see people shivering this much. I never thought that there was no place where there was no cold. I mean, those days, right? So th this teaches you everything. You say, look, everybody is different, every climate different, every, you know, the way people do things, the things they know, the things they value, all of which are so very different indeed. And I think the reason uh, Indians, uh, you know, succeed everywhere is because of this value of diversity, that we uh, are inclusive, that we accept diversity, uh, we value it, we understand it totally. Uh, and so I think that's the key uh, to success uh, anywhere, and I think that's why IATNs and, you know, Indians have been so good about it. Uh, I thought I would just um, maybe recall a couple of mischief, if we would. Yeah, so, so there was this guy, he is not here in reunion, so I can talk about it uh, without taking name. Uh, he's the kind of guy who would, you know, a very good, brilliant guy, I mean, maxing, topping every exam, 100 out of 100, even 105 out of 100, brilliant guy. So he would, you know, we, we come out of the exam, and everybody is saying, kya hua exam mein? So there, something was pointed out, wo, we used to say, tel lag gaya or something, I don't know, right? Everybody is like, uh, so, so uh, then badly they think. But this guy is going very fast, and he's crossing me, and he say, hey, how was your exam? Uh, how was, uh, before I can even respond to it, he's gone, but he's just saying, mine was great. I mean, he, he didn't wait to actually hear about, you know, how you did or anything like that, right? Um, and we have a lot of people like that, and they are very good people, actually. It's just they are so full of themselves. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, but, okay, but they, they do contribute to society in positive ways. Uh, anyhow, so this guy, uh, so, so we, we said, no, there were a little group of people. So they said, hey, let's do something about it. Uh, so they put up a notice in front of the mess uh, which said that, hey, there's a new club called Saudi Cornot Club or something like that, which is what we were learning in thermodynamics at that point. Thermodynamics, Saudi Cornot cycle or something. So there was a Saudi Cornot Club, uh, some French stuff. Uh, and they said, look, uh, that this uh, you know, guy who's doing so great in thermodynamics course would be rewarded, awarded by the instructor. Um, and so we knew he's a guy who's on top, right? And he sees the notice, he gets taken in. Uh, he said, yeah, 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 okay, you know, you have to go talk to the instructor, he's going to reward you, award you, whatever, right? So he, he goes, and, and that particular instructor was uh, was a bit of a, a terror, I would say. I mean, not a very easy person to talk to. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, we can only guess what transpired uh, between <laughs> this student who was going to get Saudi Karnat uh, award, award of some kind or other from the instructor and the instructor. Okay, but it was never talked about again. Uh, okay, that particular incident, uh, right? Uh, there was another one, uh, which was this guy. You know, we all have these crazy people. Every batch has got very crazy people. I mean, really the top, not, not the normal kind of crazy people, real crazy people. So uh, this guy was, um, uh, you know, and then people used to bet uh, with the egg coupons all the time. I mean, about what you can or cannot do, challenge people with 50 egg coupons, you can do anything. Uh, right? There was an outer limit of, uh, you know, giving and accepting. So it was, must have been one of these things. We say, okay, 50 occupants, I bet you do it. Uh, what was the bet about? This guy say, while well, you come out of, uh, you know, your, your washing room, uh, bathroom, shower, without wearing anything. Without wearing anything. So anyhow, okay, with 50 occupants, uh, okay, that's a good deal, I would say. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so this guy, uh, he said, yeah, he, he would do it. Uh, so, but only problem is that these guys uh, who, who set him up, uh, they, they also uh, called somebody from girls' hostel, uh, okay, at that point visiting his room, uh, okay. So this guy comes out, but he got a towel around his head, okay, he comes out. But this person visiting from the girls' hostel, he said, hey, Kapoor, what are you doing here, right? Uh, he's not Kapoor. He, I changed the name. Uh, okay, right, uh, right. But 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 that person from girls' hostel could recognize him, you know, with a towel around his head. Uh, so so fantastic. I, I mean, you know, people remember these kind of things long after they are gone. I named him Kapoor. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this, yeah. Oh, how to good. 
Um, and of course, there were, you know, people were, were recollecting some stuff like this yesterday. Go, go, yeah, we, we, like, I mean, what you would do, for example, you get into somebody's room from the uh, window. I mean, you climb up or you climb down, you get in the window, which is to be open. Uh, okay, and then you change uh, the, the two sides of the room. So swap them. Everything on left goes to right. Everything right goes to left. When the, this guy opens the room, he's like totally dumbstruck. He's like, where, where's my, what happened? Uh, right? Couldn't figure out actually what really happened there. Okay, uh, many such things. Okay, I mean, so it's not enough time. Actually, we are running quite late now. So um, I, I'll conclude there, except to say, you know, what comes to my mind uh, when um, now we are, um, we came together for a couple of days. We had a lot of fun. We time to go back very soon. Uh, there was this Mehendi Hassan Gajal uh, that we used to listen to when we were, uh, you know, there. It just became popular. Jagjit Singh, Chitra Singh, you remember, became popular when we were there. They came in 78 uh, with their uh, collection of Gajals then called Unforgettable. So some record were released at that time. Uh, it was fantastic times, and so the Mehendi Hassan then was singing, say, Ab, uh, Abke hum bichde, to shayad kabhi khwabo mein mile, jis tarah sukhe huye fool kitabo mein mile. So with that I conclude, and I hope that, you know, we'll be little more than leaf, dried leaf in a book when we meet next. Great. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, sir. Now we move on to the next segment of the ceremony, which includes collaboration at opportunities with IIT Kanpur. I would now request Professor J. Ramkumar, Professor in Charge of MedTech, to kindly address the gathering. Okay, so, uh, it on? Okay, so uh, welcome to the campus back and uh, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Wishing you and your family happy and uh, prosperous new year. I wish this year also adds more happiness. So I'm here to uh, pitch in for a, a good cause. Uh, we have started a, a lab which is called as Imagineering Lab. So Imagineering Lab comes from two words, which is Imagine and Engineering. So we are trying to push our students to go to the next level, not stopping them at a prototyping level, but go further down so that your product reaches the market or the society, whatever it is. So that's how the new word came into existence, which is called as Imagineering. It's a, a brother of Tinkering Lab. So it's, it's on the higher side. So here uh, at our campus, uh, so. Uh, we are uh, working in three big spaces now. One is SNT Club of IIT Kanpur. Under this club, we have seven different verticals like robotics club, underwater, all these things are there. And the next one is RUTAC, which is a national initiative taken by Government of India, working uh, uh, to address the rural requirements of Indian community. So that's the next one. And the third one is a medtech space, wherein which we have, we have started tying hands with uh, GSVM, King George Medical College, uh, and uh, SGPGI are uh, trying to look at only non-invasive medical devices. Predominantly, we are looking at diagnostic devices and aiding devices which can help the needy people. So that's the uh, space which we are working on. And uh, currently, we have been, this, all these things have got integrated and in the last couple of years, like last four years, we have been able to generate somewhere close to around about 14 patents, national patents, and five transfer of technology could happen. Uh, all these things could happen because we have uh, three strong verticals which are attached to it. One is faculty, students, and uh, we have our SIIC ecosystem, and we are also trying to connect with uh, various MSME companies and some NGOs. Rita Madam, who is here, she has been strongly helping us in connecting the link. So uh, we have also students who are coming and participating. On an hourly basis, they get paid. 
on a mini project they come and execute here they get credits on a full project yes they get credit and for a full thesis for phd scholars so all of them can come and participate in this space now what is the problem in this space this space is spread all across the institute and it has become very old which needs a relook and which has to improve its efficiency so that's what is the pitch talk so we are trying to connect with students with faculty members with our sic ecosystem msme and one umbrella so that our efficiency could improve our students always nowadays become second rind runners for big events they are not able to hit at the final uh, goal or they are not able to make a niche which was which then happened in the past but not now why because they don't have a single umbrella so we wanted to move everything to a single umbrella and make a maker space where in which all these people can come and work and here there is not going to be any commitment people come here work conditionally and then try to develop whatever it is to the require requirements so some of the recent thing which we have developed so that's that's all for the presentation today we developed uh, uh, sabji koti which was with a sic ecosystem and iit kanpur phd scholar uh, where in which the objective was to reduce the drudgery of the uh, vegetable vendor so we could extend the life of the vegetable by 7 days so 3 days to 7 days the technology was pretty interesting we found out the gas which gets evolved so now try to dissociate the gas so that it can stretch along so that was the technique and it was it was very much accepted it was presented in front of the um, ministry for uh, agriculture we presented it and prime minister also had a visit of it then was amla d seeder uh, d c the grating machine is very well known but amla comes with a seed in the center and it has a skin at the round so the, now the grater has to be made into a cone shape and then we try to degrade uh, we do the grating properly so that was also a te technology which was done then uh, amla uh, shredding machine then bale cutting machine which was we, all these things was focused towards uh, one particular segment of food processing industry so we could work and uh, thanks to rita madam who said she was trying to connect with various vendors the next set of segments which we work for this metex space we did during the time of peak covid was a boon for us we could develop uh, swasa mask little bit modification on it we could do it we could develop a 10 liter oxygen concentrator so that one concentrator could cater two beds so that was our focus and the other thing whatever internationally available oxygen concentrator did not have a humidifier so we identified for indian scenario in room environment we need a dehumidifier so we also connected with it we could do a tot of it and uh, somewhere 400 units were sold and four four companies came forward and we got it done we are currently working on developing surgical uh, the dental uh, tools which can which can be used by the patient as well as for uh, by the doctor for testing oral cancer so we developed it and now with king george medical college the testing is going on we have uh, generated patents out of it so this is what we worked in the medtech space and in the snt we are also interested to give lot of training for our students see currently Uh, the first year when the student as soon as he joins we give lot of training in in uh, in the virtual space so but nothing on the physical space so we wanted to give lot of training for the students so training prototype development and competition such that our snt could make their niche in the international competitions today we are uh, we are aiming at only international national we have crossed their barrier so we have gone to international so currently doing all these things we don't have a single umbrella where we can demonstrate all these things so we don't have a big space that's one and second thing all the machines whatever we have are 50 years old 40 years old so when we talk about resolutions we don't have much to show and we don't have also electronics to back whatever we do so this is a space we are now looking forward here in which we are looking forward for your support both intellectually and also financially okay so here we have right from undergraduates to phd scholars participating in one common space so this is all about our pitch for you so you can if you have any questions you can ask me currently i am heading the center my name is ram kumar and along with me there is an reo who is attached with it so we'll be happy if you have time to take you to our space of medtech so that we can show a small glimpse what are we doing and currently for hc verma we are uh, he is now taking a big initiative in 
in taking uh, science experiments to rural people. So we are making all his physics experiment prototypes at our lab. So we are doing it. But uh, still we have a lot of lack, you know, we are not able to uh, we are not able to take it to such a high level such that we can make a niche and say, here is a product from IIT Kanpur. So that's where we are. So we are in the second line. We wanted to go up. So where in which we request all your help and support and blessings. That's it from me. So any questions, I'll be happy to take. Have any of the roof bag uh, projects have been commercialized, scaled up? Uh, uh, we have transferred one product, we have given it to uh, Libby, no, we have given it to Leban, Libya now, under uh, Ardo, we have given it one, so oil expeller we have given it, and we have also given the technology, we are open for selling the technology to anybody. Well, how much did they pay for it? So it was right now, government, government understanding, Ardo came into picture, it was only free of cost we did it. So we did it free so of cost. So you want to have money and then give it free? Uh, it's not like that, <laughs> sir. No, Rutag, Rutag was an initiator from PSA's office. But, sir, at some point of time, even today, we have to do free because we have to prove to the world that yes, we are. So, currently, we don't have that. No, no, see, I, I understand. Actually, the Rutag products everywhere face the same problem. Yeah. It's not only here. I, I mean, all this uh, relevant rural technology, it's very good, it can be useful. But somehow it's never taken in, not commercialized at the scale. Uh, that, so, I mean, I think that's the bottleneck. It's not the technology, it's the bottleneck. The bottleneck is this manufacturing, is marketing, and yeah, so sir. acceptability in the market. Sir, two things we lack. See, all our products, all our technology <coughs> are, are excellent. But converting it into a product which is reachable to the market, that's where we lag. Yeah. Correct. So now the whole point is, I think that's the problem that needs to be cracked. Correct, sir. So here in this space, we products. yeah, in the space we need also industrial designers. So we need to bring in a lot of people. So currently there is no provision for even bringing. So all our technology, what we develop, does not go to the market because it is not market friendly product. Because we are going to do everything in house. Yes. Correct. Yeah. The seven IITs have looked at. Yeah. Is there any product from any of the seven IITs which has gone forward and went into the market? You, you need people to develop. Yeah. I don't think all skills could be brought under one, one roof because some skills may be required only for a short period of time. Correct, sir. Correct. So that's what I said. Your intellectual support, your financial support, everything is required such that, see, currently what happens are younger generation, they look for success. So if they, if they develop something and they immediately look for, can somebody take it? So, but they don't understand there is some intervention required such that it can go to the market. So that also has to be taught. See, first of all, there is no market survey on these products. So what happens is, is it's a product forward, not the government money. So it's a government money, take the money, please develop something, right? Now the point is, there is no understanding <laughs> So that has to come first, not the product. Yeah. So I think you know, if you redesign your uh, uh, product development and have more attention on how eventually it's going to go to the market rather than developing more products. I know there are hundreds of these products. Correct. In every day. Yeah. And there's some of them are even good. Yeah. But they don't afford it in the Yeah. Yeah. So here uh, in Rutag, what we do is. So that's what I need all your support. So 
Uh, we will get through so our dollar because to get it connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two missing things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One is users, if one has to work with the users. Yes. Uh, then only you can actually popularize it as users at the government. Correct. And the second one, that is Kanpur Sindhya. We do not have proper fabrication facility. Correct. There are no good fabrication so yeah, so I agree with you, sir. So we we currently we have understood this lesson, whatever you have said. So we are now getting into touch with again uh, Sir Sangal and Nita uh, Madam. So we are trying to have NGO to come up with a problem statement and then start working. So RSK is a good initiative. We are also tying hands with RSK so that we can break through their reach out if we could do some technology and take it up. So we we are trying to grow. We need guidance. We need uh, support. So if somebody could help us in participating and improvising, we will be very happy. The students are very energetic. The only thing is we are not able to channelize them and get the best out of them. So that's, that's the uh, take. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I would definitely look forward. So if there is any suggestions or connects, if you can establish, we will be happy to do it. So now we are pitching it as a maker space rather than imaginary lab. So we would like all the students. So currently there is a big gap between undergrad and postgraduate students. So they don't even have any interaction. So once there is a space, their knowledge and this energy from UG students can motivate and bring up very big products. So that's the pitch we are looking forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would now request Dr. Nikhil Agarwal, CEO first and C3i Hub to kindly address the gathering. Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'll keep it short. I know the lunch is ready. The weather is nice outside. You may have already heard about the incubation activities that we are doing in IIT Kanpur. Uh, you, many of you have visited SIC yesterday. Uh, so this is a board of director. It's a professionally managed board. Professor Karandikar mentioned that many uh, IIT alumni are part of the board. Uh, Dr. Saurav Shirvastav, Dr. Ajay Chaudhary is the founder of HCL, Mr. Shrikant Shastri, and now we are in, in the process of onboarding uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar, who is the former Defense Secretary, and of course, certain board members are the virtue of the position as uh, the Director, Deputy Director, DORD, PIC, are there as a part of the board. So it's a professionally managed board. We meet every two months uh, to discuss and deliberate that how we can take the activities forward. Uh, the SIC was founded uh, 20 years back with a modest grant of 5 crores uh, from SIDBI and uh, UP government. Since then, the, uh, uh, the ecosystem has grown in one of the largest tech incubators in the country. Uh, today, we have close to 150 companies. Uh, we have the largest cyber security cohort in the country. Uh, and that is because of the, the technology innovation hub, which is also known as C3i hub which was set up by the DST when Professor Sharma was a secretary DST. Uh, it is one of the most, uh, I would say, outstanding contribution and the fastest contribution science and technology happened within nine months time. 3,600 crores worth of TIH was set up in 23 institution. Uh, that was a phenomenal speed. Uh, and the result of that 170 crores come to IIT Kanpur. And we set up this state of art cyber security for cyber critical infrastructure. Uh, now, the interesting part, what the government has done in the last few years, most of the schemes which the government of India is proposing to work with the institution, almost 30% of it is uh, coming as a startup grants or a startup or innovation grant, which is quite a welcome change in the last few years. And that has resulted in getting a large number of entrepreneurs and innovators coming in different area. For example, not only the C3I center, we also set up a center for artificial intelligence with a grant from the UP government. And we are working closely with uh, uh, UP 
uh, just now I was sitting at the back and I was receiving one message from a company called Zupi. It is founded by 2017 graduate IIT Kanpur Dilshare. This company is now $400 billion company. It is one of the largest in the board games. Very young graduate now, he want to set up uh, uh, the center for gaming technology and where he want to contribute a large amount of money for the new entrepreneurs who wish to develop new kind of games. So that is a fascinating activity which is happening. So we, uh, uh, we engage mentors all across. We have a large list of mentors. Some of you are already part of it. Sanjeev Vangras ji and all few others are part of it. So we invite you to engage as mentors. Uh, the, comp the mentorship uh, with the companies are two-way process. Uh, you can become a formal advisor to the company. You can become mentor to the company. You can uh, become an investor in the company. You can become a stakeholder in the company. You can become board member in the company. So it's a professional relationship that may exist uh, with the companies. And we can map your interest with the company's interest because now we have 150 companies uh, which are in different areas. So some of them may be interested in working with you and similarly you will be interested in working with them so you may find a great sense of fulfillment in working with young entrepreneurs and building some of these companies uh, i just told you about this we were founded 20 years back since then we have become the one of the largest tech in business incubator uh, in like most of the development in the incubation space has happened in the last four or five years in 2018-19 we were having barely 20-25 companies and today we are we are able to boast a large amount of com a number of companies. We are not only working in uh, a deep tech area like uh, cyber security and artificial intelligence or drone technology. We are also cognizant of the fact about the sustainability. I think some of you mentioned about sustainability uh, in the past. Uh, recently, we have uh, we are doing a program with the Ministry of Urban Affairs. We are bringing. 20 companies where the ministry is giving 25 lakhs each to every company in ways to wealth. So Center for Sustainability we are setting up as a part of the SIAC. Uh, so we are working directly with ULBs uh, across the country. ULB means urban local bodies which is municipalities and identifying the problem of the ULBs. So we are now going back to the government and saying that hey startup will not pitch you, you have to pitch to the startup by telling the problems that you have. So in fact, the secretary Mahua took us uh, quite seriously and uh, one of the national events, he asked six, six commissioners uh, from various uh, municipalities to come on stage and put to the startup that why they should come and work in Novi Mumbai or Chandigarh or Ladakh. So that is, these are the welcome change we are seeing in the startup ecosystem. And that has created certain national impact. Uh, uh, I'm sure many of you heard about this ventilator project, which is well documented by a book from Shrikant Shastri Ramita Bandhupadhyaya. Uh, within, uh, I still vividly remember uh, in the end of March, the 20 member team was formed for the ventilator to form, to found out about the ventilator. And in one of the first Zoom calls, we actually saw the Google images, how the ventilator looked like. Uh, from that Google images, somebody actually searched what is the meaning of ventilator. We actually searched and then shared the screen. This is how the ventilator looked like. And you will be very proud to know the uh, young engineers of IIT Kanpur, 25, 26 year old young engineers, they took up the mantle and 60 days time, the real ventilator was there. Within 90 days time, the patients were on the ventilator. Today we have sold close to 5,000 ventilators. Thousands of patients have gone through the ventilator, not a single adverse event. So that is a engineering might within 90 days, we were able to put, uh, pull off that particular activity. Uh, the Swasa mask, uh, uh, Professor Ram Kumar and uh, Dr. Karandikar already talked about. So we jokingly always say that uh, the divided by the ideology, united by the mask. You can see Prime Minister Modi, uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, uh, and the Chief Minister of uh, Bengal all wearing the same mask. And uh, uh, thanks to Professor Sharma, the mask was also nominated as an official mask of Indian Parliament. Uh, all the members of the Parliament wore that mask for many, many months. I can see uh, Professor Balani also wearing that mask today. <laughs> so uh, so the another uh, national impact we created uh, by uh, doing the 70 installation of the O2 plants. And for this, the quite a generous donation was given uh, by the different batches. Uh, uh, for I would say all the three projects, we must have raised almost 10 crores as CSR and donations from different projects. 
a very proud movement what we did uh, again young engineering graduate from iit kanpur uh, ankit patel so he built up india's first floating cng uh, station at khirkia ghat in uh, yes sir So I'll, I mean, I'll communicate to the team which has developed it. I think it's a well noted. <laughs> not this one. I'm not aware what is it. Yeah. No, thank you very much. So there is another uh, engineering feat done by the young engineers. Uh, now there is a full-fledged company called Aquafront Infrastructure. Uh, so in Khirkia Ghat, uh, some of you have visited Banaras recently. You may know that two ghats have been added out of the Asi Ghat, Raj Ghat and Khirkia Ghat. So in Khirkia Ghat, world's first floating CNG station was set up. So now the boats, which most of the boats are now the CNG boats to reduce the pollution. Earlier it was diesel boats. So they can, they don't have to disembark, but they can directly go to the floating CNG station and get, get the gas filled. It's a highly complicated uh, technology where the uh, gas is coming from the land and being filled. And that uh, also because of the tide situation is continuously moving. So they are able to build up. Uh, quite a stable uh, CNG station, which was mentioned by the Prime Minister a couple of times. Uh, so this is a quite a famous company now, the pool, the Kanpur flower. Uh, not only they make incense sticks, but they are able to come up with the uh, leather made of flower waste, which is called Fleather. And not only Fleather, they are now working on, working on a, a styrofoam, which is thermocol made of flower. Uh, styrofoam is like one of the most bio undegradable product in the world it's take almost 1000 years to uh, uh, dissolve the thermocol but the flour based based uh, uh, styrofoam can be dissolved within three months time if you put it into the soil so that's something like a, a quite an amazing work done by the bio lab and the engineers so we uh, i must invite all of you to uh, become part of the siac uh, whether in terms of investors mentors uh, some of the companies are looking for business across the country, across the world, uh, whether in cyber security or in artificial intelligence. We have some uh, brilliant engineers. They are doing some outstanding work. So my request would be that please uh, join hand with SIIC in any way you can. Uh, we are raising investment for our company. You can become the investors. You can become the mentors. Uh, and, uh, and you can guide these young companies to take the next step forwards. Thank you very much. Now we have a, 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 a well, I would say, functioning Noida Center. It was earlier a guest house, yes, and it also the NTA building, National Testing Agency. Now they have given the building back to us. So we will build up a complete uh, SIC floor. It's a seven floor building. Three floors are dedicated, like 21 uh, bedroom apartments, which have been given uh, build up, and four floors of offices. 
so you can move uh, the uh, temporary residence can be given in the upper floors and the companies can work in the uh, ground floor so we say within the company in the residence in 60 seconds gap so you can work probably 25 hours a day if you want. Uh, so we have a number of companies working there so Center for Artificial Intelligence for the UP government which I mentioned what is set up in NOIDA uh, and uh, you are welcome to visit NOIDA center. They are offer them the office space, not the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Like we don't differentiate between uh, Kanpur Center or Noida Center, it's another building. For us, it's same. So, for companies also, they can sit wherever they want. Okay. Depending on, see what happened, a number of companies which have done their lab work there, they completed their testing, they completed the technology, they moved to Noida for the business connect, mm -hmm. or some of the companies are also based in Noida, they are having an R&D set up that in Kanpur. That's how we are working. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank now you have a lot of data on the exit of those needs. What are the different mechanisms by which you know, they exit? I mean, some of them would go into their own manufacturing and marketing. Some would have sold it to another company and so on. What are the preferred methods of exit that you have seen so far? So, so far, I would say I can share the data which the, our growth has happened in the last four years. Uh, only single digit percent have been merged with other companies. Most of them are continuing to do the business. Uh, the success rate is around 30-35%. When I say success rate of the incubator, because success rate of the market is different than the incubator, we say the product is at the MVP stage and they are able to offer the product to the customer and some money is made. So that is we call the success of the incubator. Of course, uh, going to the market and running a business is a longer term where we are involved uh, partially. Uh, but most 35% of our companies are able to reach to that stage, which is a fairly good matrix considering the American matrix, which is like all these. Well, well, this is a very good ratio. How many is 15, 20 percent? Yeah, no, that's right. It's very decent. Yeah, yeah. But like he's saying, it depends how you define success. I, I mean, all the operations are successful. Yeah, I know. But the patients are. <laughs> But sir, we will get to know once we yeah, have completed 5-10 years' time. Do you check companies as they come Yes, out? yes. 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 So we hand over them, we track them. So there is a currently incubated company, then we are a graduated company. We work with them. We uh, give them similar access if they need any kind of support. We provide them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I would now request Ms. Reema Mittal, CEO from Technopark, to kindly address the gathering. Hi, uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, I wish you a very, very happy new year. I, after Professor Sharma's, uh, you know, that hilarious and dynamic speech, I only feel a bit guilty standing here. Uh, but I'll just take five minutes and I'll not run through any presentation. I'll just, uh, because we have been in operations for uh, just three and a half years and I have more of sort of a vision to share with you all. So I represent IIT Kanpur Research and Technology Park Foundation. Uh, which is again a Section 8 company, a not-for-profit, and we started our operations in 2019, in March 2019. So we function under the brand name of Technopark at IITK. Uh, just to set the context, uh, and I'm sure because we have people over here from industry, from alumni, from government, so the idea is that we all know where the innovation ecosystem of India is. It's thriving, the world is talking about it. But uh, if you compare it with, with the competitive economies, one major thing is that most of this innovation ecosystem, the funding is coming from the government. A large part of funding, R&D funding, comes from the government of India, vis-a-vis -vis if you compare it with the economies abroad. So what the government of India has also done, we are also an initiative of the government of India. So parallel to the incubators and the accelerators that they have set up and they are pumping in a huge amount of money, in 2016, under the Startup India and Stand Up India initiative, they started the scheme of setting up uh, academic research, academic uh, research and technology parks that are associated with institutes of higher education. 
So at the moment, if I have to say, there are about nine research parks with IITs and ISC, and IIT Kanpur was the third one to start its operations. Yes, uh, seeing a bit of success with some of the research parks, the government is now extending this entire scheme to all the other research parks. So what is the idea of having these research parks? The vision is very clear. We have evolved our own vision because each research park is very different from the other. So IIT Kanpur Research Park, though there will be some similarities in terms of the mandate, but the operations and the models that we evolve over the time, they are different from IIT Bombay. IIT Bombay will be different from IIT Madras. So when we started out, we were given, we had only the vision of fostering and accelerating R&D collaborations between academia and industry, plus giving, uh, getting the government on board. So basically, it's a triple helix model. We are trying to bring in the industry, the government, and the academia. Now, uh, if I have to tweak it a bit, in the past three and a half years, after our interactions and after all our experiences, including challenges, some triumphs, uh, so what we are as a vision, as a team, what we have put forward with the, in front of us is that creating a very close-knit, well-integrated, expansive R&D ecosystem where actually it's not just accelerating the industry academy, where the industry, the academy, and the government closely work. Because a lot is happening at the government front, a lot of schemes are happening, same is in the academy also, even with an IITK system, a lot of things are happening, and parallelly, industry is also working. So can we just bring together all the three entities and create that expansive R&D ecosystem? Now, I'll go step by step. We have a six uh, sort of objectives that we have outlined, and again, these six objectives are based on our experiences of the last three and a half years. One increase R&D collaborations between industry and academia. So at the moment also, there are a lot of R&D collaborations happening uh, with the institute. All the big companies are working. But what we are, uh, what we are trying to do is take it to the one notch level up. What we are asking the industry is that rather, you know, just working in that virtual mode, how about you come and set up your R&D bases within our premises? Now, why would any industry do that and what advantage it will get? It is more so to integrate them into our ecosystem, and we also get access to their ecosystem. So for instance, if I'm inviting Bell, or if I'm inviting, and these are the companies that we are working with currently in discussions. So if I'm inviting Tata's, or Bell, or JK Cement, any of these big companies, what we are saying is, why don't you put up a center of excellence or an R&D office within Technopark premises? We are also a Section 8 company owned by IIT Kanpur. What will, give, what will happen is the industry will get a direct Ac direct access to the entire IITK ecosystem, which Professor Karandakar has already highlighted. You get to work with all the faculty, interdisciplinary faculty, 500 plus. You get to work with our students, which is like a 9,000 plus pool. You get to access all our central research facilities, our research infrastructure at a very subsidized rate. The same rate that our students are paying, which has been a big attraction for the industry as well. What we also encourage is, again, so there was this discussion on patenting and commercialization. A lot of patents are generated every year in the institute. I mean, even IITK has 600 plus patents and the other IITs also have built. What the industry can do is, and particularly startups also and MSMEs also, is licensing and commercialization of those technologies. So that is also an access that we are giving to the industry. So basically the idea is that through this technopark, the industry has an option to set up their R&D, co-locate their R&D spaces, R&D labs, R&D offices within our premises and become a part of ITK ecosystem and work with it. Now, just one example I'll give. So rather, I'll state two companies here. GCRS, which is Geoclimate Risk Solutions, it is uh, founded by one of our alum, one of the alumni of IIT Kanpur, 2004 batch pass out. And his company, the base is in Vishakhapatnam, but he has set up his R&D office and he has been with us since 2020. And how it has helped him is he's heavily collaborating with the Earth Sciences Department, Professor Rajiv Sinha, carrying out writing joint projects with him for the third party funding, even very closely working with the students, which I'll also talk about is one of the second initiatives, accessing all the facilities. So that is the advantage you get. The second company, again by an alumnus of IIT Kanpur, and where I see you know a sort of a participation or your feedback and suggestions. Uh, Technathon International, which is again by 1974 alumnus, uh, Mr. Sanjay Trivedi, and he is a, it's a Singapore-based company, 45 years in 
existence and this company is again collaborating with the chemical engineering department and they have big plans uh, he is the person who is driving it forward and based on the success of the lab scale study he is interested in putting up a pilot plant over 5000 square feet space so that's the way you know we are also looking for the involvement of the alumni so that's one part of increasing r and d collaborations second is what we are working is a very active industry student engagement program we have actually with due consideration and taking in mind that the academics also do not suffer so we have uh, designed this program called revop which is iit ke students tackling real world projects and again it is only open to our member companies throughout the year so what happens is any company which thinks that some of the problem statements that they can involve our students they float these problems and we float it to our registered students so we have right now about 800 students who have enrolled for this revop program and then very professionally these program these students are interviewed and then they work with the industry and we have made it mandatory because when you are working with the students you have to have some mentors so industry has to provide a mentor on board so it is from the member companies and this has seen more success with the companies which have actually put up their base in art premises like i just mentioned gcrs they have hired three students vitol aviation is a company which has already exist exited but they worked with a group of about 20 25 students so it is an added advantage both for the students as well as for the industry because students of course they get a hands on experience and industry they get to work with their future uh, they have this uh, you know possibility of hiring their future workforce i would say they can extend and that has happened but a very low number of about 5 students were hired by that company vitol aviation on the payrolls so that's a very second program that we have and of course as we go with the time we would like to uh, make it more effective the third what we are working towards is building these r and d labs and facilities now what we are doing is that we are opening all the central research infrastructure that the industry that the institute has built over the years for the industry what we are also trying to work towards is can the industry open its facilities for our faculty and scholars so that is something i am again i cannot commit to it because we have just initiated this uh, idea with our member companies but i am also very positive that this may happen so this is uh, the third what we are doing and we are also uh, because a lot of facilities already exist so we are participating in one of the defense corridor schemes where we are uh, trying to set up some dtis communications related facilities in technopark which will be made available not only to researchers but to industry uh, across so that's building r and d labs uh, and facilities the fourth is uh, the fourth important point is again the licensing and patenting of technologies which i've already mentioned about we advocate very strongly to all our companies we are interacting with because uh, the major one of the major uh, thing about technopark is that when you talk about technology the idea of technopark is to push the technology up the value chain so whether you are talking about startups or you are talking about research happening in labs the most important thing is can it be pushed in terms of the trl levels where the industry intervention is needed even in terms of startups you know two years three years of incubation period after that also you need that strong foothold where you can take your work up so i think that is where you know we are so uh, with that kind of vision we are uh, reaching out to the industry that why don't you involve yourselves from the trl level 1 or why don't you come and intervene and put up uh, take up technologies that are even being developed in the labs like for instance endeavor air which professor karandikar mentioned endeavor air is a company by professor abhishek and as far as i know he was doing the same work and it's in his words i would like to share here he said he was doing the same work as a faculty in his lab and he was trying to reach out to the government to the industry but he didn't get that much success and that is what pushed him to put this company up so that and that is actually in his words and that's why he formed this company called endorea and now of course it is it's seeing success it has raised everybody knows about endorea this company the other company is by professor anand manshu ghatak which is gitty tech amazing again it's a work which has been done in his lab he is trying he tried to get some funding from industry partners but again as he failed so that's why he has put this company i don't know but uh, my last interaction was he is again trying to pitch it out to the industry to get more funding for the work so that is where i see that you know the industries or the technopark is needed so that you know it's one or two professors but there is a lot which is happening in the labs 
and the funding is needed. Not just the government funding, which is coming in through a lot of schemes. Government has floated a lot of schemes where they are even asking that, you know, half funding we'll give, half funding industry gives. But the industry has to come forward to if they want, you know, the Make in India or Atmanir Barbara. So that is where Technopark comes in. And we also help our companies with all the funding schemes that are coming in. Uh, they are sometimes even the big players, they're not even aware of what the government funding schemes are coming out. So we help them with that kind of information as well. So uh, this is overall what we are saying. And uh, the other part, which um, I think I'll not touch, it's like it's not too important focus for us. But uh, Professor Karandakar said that uh, employment opportunities in this uh, space, when somebody asked that, you know, are you retaining, are you able to get the good faculty? So we know the Kanpur city as a, has a challenge. Uh, we also know that the employment opportunities uh, for the non-faculty people, I mean for the women or the men on the campus, the spouses, are limited. What we are also doing through our companies is we are actively encouraging them that if they can open, and again, it's a very, very professional way we are doing it, if you can open up some of those opportunities for you know, the talented resource pool that is there within the campus. And it's, a, it's an amazingly talented resource pool. I don't even have to go into it. And similarly, we are also in touch with the industry associations like FICCI, we have CII, we have Thai UP, and we have already... So we are also very careful when we are building our collaborations and partnerships. It's not like just an MOU being signed. Like, for instance, we have signed an MOU with UPTA government to create and to actively participate in creating a defense and aerospace cluster because UP is one of the defense industry corridors. So there we are very actively working with the team in uh, trying to create that ecosystem, which will have different stakeholders. Similarly, we have tied uh, MOU with NASCOM. NASCOM being an IT body, what uh, one uh, feedback we got from them and where they're very keen is an open portal for the patents, which already I think our technology transfer office has, but uh, we have not been able to take it forward. Our discussions are halted at the moment and also uh, uh, because this COVID gap came in, but we have just reinitiated this discussions if something can happen. The third uh, collaboration that we have built in the last three and a half years is with I Am Lucknow Incubator. And the idea of building this collaboration with the incubator was that, again, they come with a lot of management and financial expertise, and we come with a lot of technical expertise. Even some of our member companies, though they are not startups, they are not looking for funds, but they are at some point of time, like GCRS, they're looking for Series B funding. So can their incubator help them with uh, advice in terms of raising? And can we help the companies with the technical expertise? So that is how we are very careful in choosing our collaborators and partnerships. So if I have to sum up this entire initiative of Technopark, as that's why I said we are trying to work towards creating a very well-integrated ecosystem, R&D ecosystem, because R&D ecosystem has every component. It's the startups as one of the components, but then you have the government, you have the industry, the big players, the small players, and then you have academia as well. So that is our uh, overall vision. And uh, yes, we'll be very happy. I'll be very happy to connect with you. So instead of that, I am carrying some of the brochures if you're interested in, and uh, we'll be very happy to uh, you know interact with you and see if you can also help us in taking this uh, endeavor forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, please. Which IIT one of the best, ma'am? Yeah. Which IIT one of the best technopaths so far? See, uh, again, uh, that's, it's not, I will not, again, how to answer this? I'll, IIT Madras was the first one to start their uh, technopark, their research park, but I'll, I totally, I, we have to give it and we have to accept it that they're earning a huge revenues of 40 crores. That's the last that I had in my but uh, we also have to see that it's the advantage that they have as the location. They are in Adyar, which is a very commercial area. So all the big companies that you talk about, you know, they have their centers in IIT Madras Research Park. Of course, St. Gobain was their first anchor client. So if you have to go, that's why I very clearly said that every research park is different. You know, ours is different from Kanpur. Ours is, uh, so uh, Madras is different from Bombay. Even IIT Bombay Research Park, their new upcoming building, what I have heard is already 60% sold out. So it's a, I, I wouldn't, I will very frankly say that it is also a sort of, you know, uh, rental proposition that is there because they are all in the commercial spaces. 
and which is so uh, i am very very much in touch what we are also planning is to set up this association of academic university research parks and i am in touch with iit bombay research park ceo who is kameshwari so uh, it was just an interaction with kameshwari when we were starting out i i asked her that uh, how do you reach out to the companies and the answer that i got is they never had to reach out to the companies companies came to them and they are coming in such numbers that they are not able to cater you know to their requirements whereas in our case i don't i have no qualms in saying that we have done a lot of work and challenges in reaching out to the companies because every time we get to see we get to hear at times is why not noida why kanpur because noida also you have your center but having in noida a research park fails the vision because the vision is to integrate the ecosystems so you in noida you can work maximum with a few of our people i mean few of faculty few of students but you will not able to access this entire ecosystem which exists in iit kanpur yeah Yeah right. So we have so the our upcoming facility. I don't know if I have got your question uh, right, but for instance, this Technathon International, which is a chemical company, they are. So when they came to us and they said they are interested in setting up their 5,000 square foot plant, they have given their requirements to us. And one of the requirements is that can we handle this hazardous waste, which is coming out? And obviously, you know, if we are not able to, so our technical experts they will make sure that we have that capability in our upcoming facility. And if we are not able to, then we will not be able to set up that pilot plant in our facility. So it is again any industry which is coming to us, they give us their requirements because when you we're talking about r&d you have all kind of companies we have chemical companies you have you know the exhaust the, there are a lot of other requirements for each industry so we have that provision with us that we'll make sure that those are accommodated in the space yeah okay okay thank you so much thank you And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we have come to an end of the ceremony, I would request Mr. Kapil Kaur, CEO of IT Development Foundation, to kindly deliver word of thanks. That's the last one. <laughs> I am your savior, so I won't take too much of your time. Uh, I'm honored and privileged to offer the word of thanks uh, for this uh, function. I would start by thanking our director, Professor, Professor Abhay Karandikar, for taking time out to be with uh, all of us here today and giving us a very insightful presentation on the institutional progress. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to thank uh, Professor S. Ganesh, Deputy Director, IIT Kanpur, though he's not here, but he's been very supportive of ensuring that we are able to host these uh, reunions fairly flawlessly, I would say. Uh, my heartfelt gratitude to your batch coordinators, uh, Mr. Amod Agarwal, Professor Ashutosh Sharma, uh, Dr. Rajiv Desai, Mr. Rajiv Batra, uh, our distinguished alumnus who, who graced the occasion today and to be a part of this 40th reunion. Uh, uh, gratitude to Professor Kantesh Balani, who is here with us today. Uh, and uh, even though he's not fully recovered from it, he's been unwell, he's taken the time out to be here with us. Uh, uh, Professor Ram Kumar, uh, Dr. Nikhil Agarwal, and Ms. Reema Mittal for uh, presenting MedTech, SIIC, and Technopark, respectively. And uh, last but not the least, uh, the, the whole DORA and IITK DF team who've been working tirelessly uh, to put together this and many other reunions. So they've really worked hard for this. And uh, finally, most importantly, it is your batch who've come together and made this occasion special. So, so we're so grateful that you've taken the time out to come back to campus after a long time. So it means a lot to us. And we really hope that uh, we've made it memorable for you. 
So thank you so much. I will not hold you now. We'll have the group photograph in uh, the uh, in the lobby outside, and then um, and just next to the lunch area. Thank you. Thank you.